Now, I cannot heal. The man that tells you to heal you is wrong. You're already healed. But it's recognizing the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, if Martha knew that she could see him again, that she'd get her desire because he was the manifested word. Can we believe that much tonight to believe that sure we ought to? He has come. He's come. He's come in the form of the Holy Ghost. That's who he is. Now you just pray. See up here, I had somebody standing here right here by me. You just, just pray. You see so many people praying. It's all over the building. You just have to watch the king say, say, Brother Grant, no, I, I shouldn't do it. No more you can dream here, dream. See, you might dream. You, I could have had you dream a dream of me. You believe that. But you can't do it yourself. You can say, Brother Grant, I will dream a dream of you. Now, no, you can't do that. You can't do it. You can Ever who gives a dream to you, that's the one who has to do it. Same way this one is. Ten men sitting out here at the end of the road. With Arthur Ryan. If you believe with all his heart, God will hit him with Arthur Ryan. You believe you'll do it, sir? Sitting out there with a Mexican man sitting at the end of the road. Would you believe it? No. The lady sitting next to you, she also has Arthur Ryan too. You believe God will heal you, lady? Is this got a ring down to it? I'm afraid the people don't hear it. You will? All right. How about the other little Mexican lady sitting by her? She suffers with a stomach trouble. You believe God will heal your stomach, please? Right. She got it. Yeah. When I see that light go down, that means it happened. Yeah. 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 That's it. There it was swirling all around. That does. When he can find faith, the many things he could not do because of their unbelief. Here's the lady sitting here praying for you. She's scared. She should be. She's got a cancer condition. Real bad. I don't know you. But God knows you. You believe that God can tell me about this cancer or something like that? Look at me. There's so many of you just want to see it. Look at me. Now, yes, you're not from here. This is not your home. You're from a place called Porterville, California. You think God can tell me who you are? You know, your name is Mrs. Winton. That's right. Now believe you can't show me. If thou canst believe, that's all God has to do. If thou canst believe. Did you believe that with all your heart? Somebody in this section in here thinks you believe? The Master has come and called for you. He's calling you from death to life, from sickness to health. Here's a man sitting right back here, head down praying. He's really not praying for himself, he's praying about somebody else. It's a, a girl, it's his daughter. You believe, sir? You got trouble with your legs, you got trouble with your knees. That's right. No need to weep. That's him there by you. Your daughter is in the hospital, isn't she? To birth her state. You believe? You believe? The Master has come and called for her. Do you believe this in the You will? May he visit his church tonight and you may be over. Here's a little boy. A little brown faced boy. He's suffering with a skin disease, an asthma. A little Mexican boy, Mexican boy. He is from here. He's from San Jose. You believe, son? Another thing, your father is here with you. He's a minister. That is right. You believe God can tell me what your name is? Will you make you believe? Real strong? Your name is Reuben, not Lee. The Master has come and he calls for you. Oh sinner, oh sick person, don't you see the Master manifesting in the human being between believers? He's come to call his believing children to hell. He's come to call the sinners to repent. Backslider, 
church member, the Master has come and called for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it for your needs right now? If you do, raise up your hand and say, I believe for my needs. Then raise up on your feet now and accept it. The Master has come and called for thee. And whoever you are, whatever need you have for, the Master has come and he calls for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That little woman went into the city and said, Come see a man who told me what was wrong. You didn't go into the city. You come and see it yourself. So the Master has come and called for thee. Raise up your hands and raise it and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I'm a backslider. Take me back, Lord. I need the Holy Ghost. Heal me. I'm sick. Heal me. I'm crippled. Make me well. The Master has come and called for thee. Raise up your hands now and give me praise.
Now I say, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and it go all down this line, and way down that line, to ever try. And then you come back and you have to think what she was saying, and it's just different. Oh my. But I've seen 30,000 blanket names give her heart to Jesus Christ. Breaking their idols on the ground like a dust storm. Someone missing Yeah, make sure sure. That's fine. Hey, Jerry, you know Brother Espinosa? No, I don't. Now, anybody know Brother Espinosa? Uh, he was one of the over in Mexico City when that little baby was raised in the day of that time. Gosh, that's why he You've heard the story of it, of course, it's in his business with his voice and things. I was just, I want to go down there and do something. Such humble people and they really believe they were you see the church down there's always promises something they never get to it. But here in the Bible promise we're at it, it's to it. We we, we see it. And that makes it real. All right. Now uh, now each one of you, give me your undivided attention for at least ten minutes. Maybe I'll call too many, I don't know. I, I might have done no, wrong. No. All right. They kinda got them. Turned around there, or just let them go on over into the line so they just as they are like that. Let's just, let's just begin to start the ground. You know. Get them to see so they can down there, but they're all in the I want the, the people watching. See, there's one thing you can't do. You can't have a disturbance. The Holy Spirit is in coming over. And you must be obedient during the time. How many have been in the meeting and see things go from one to another? Sure, yeah. Them lose your mind, go crazy, the seat fly around and around the building and devils and cast out. Some of them paralyzed, that they packed out of the building, still paralyzed, too. Some of them died right there, right where they're sitting, and dropped dead in the back and forth. We're not playing church. It's the Holy Spirit. Just believe. A man said one time trying to hypnotize me. They're in Canada. Across from Detroit, what is that city up there? Yeah, no, across from Detroit. Winston. Yeah, they come over there to this party and go hypnotize people for the army, you know, make them bark like dogs and things like that. And that guy's sitting out there, I kept feeling an odd spirit. And I noticed it, and the Holy Spirit said, oh, said Son of the devil, why did he put that in your heart to come here? Because you did that, they'll pack you out of here. He's still paralyzed. That's been about 12 years ago. They pack you now. God, still God. <laughs> same as God. Same. He never changed. If we can only believe, that's all we have to do is have faith. Now you look this way and believe. Now, if the Holy Spirit will come, I don't know that He will, but if He will come, now what kind of sign are we looking for today? The resurrection of Christ. Yes. The proof that Jesus is alive among us. Is that right? Everybody, don't the Bible, now have we got the sign of Solomon in the world today? Is that right? Got the sign of Noah in the world today? Is that right? Got all these other things? Now what did he say would take place in that time? The Son of Man would be revealed in that day. Is that right? What is revealed is made known. Anything that's made known is revealed. The Son of Man will be made known in that day. Well, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, would you do the same thing to make yourself known? How many believe that? Yeah. Now, have you got your, uh, everybody straight out now in your mind? Now, friends, I don't always get to all of them. I want you all just to watch the real close. Be reverent, pray, believe. Now, please, see, especially if something happens to get away from you. Don't ever want to jump up and go to Yes, but two months ago in my church, one Sunday morning, there's something, uh, Satan doing something to attract attention to people. There was an Englishman there by the name of Wayne. He lived at my, we wanted to address so we could have him arrive. He sang tapes of his meetings from overseas. And the man resented what I said horribly. And I looked down and I seen a horrible spirit of him. I had him on a private interview, told him that's this way you have heart trouble. He even resented that. I said, why'd you come to me for it? So about a month after he went to the doctor, the doctor said he got a very bad heart. So he comes to the meeting that morning, and something was said, real hot-headed Englishman, you know, he resented that his wife, a wonderful Norwegian woman, a nurse, and he's sitting there with him, 
And I said something, and he resented it right quick, you know. And what he did, is he's standing to the feet, and they were singing. And what he did, his head went back, his eyes just flipped right straight back, his face turned real dark red like that dead bear, he fell dead in the floor. Well, as church went to going on, people screaming, and I said, sit down, you're trained better than that. You're trained better than that. And so his wife got down, snatched his heart, and was gone. She began to scream, and I said, Sister, wait just a minute so I can get out of trouble here. We don't know what the problem is. And there I went down there, he's just stiff. His eyes wasn't put on, his eyes were sticking right out like that. Like, I couldn't feel him more hard than I could feel him that. She said, oh, began to scream, she began, I said, oh, we don't know what the Heavenly Father is going to do. And I said, maybe he did it for a purpose. I said, Brother Way was resenting. He said, he whispered to me that he was resenting what you said. And I said, he ought to have done that. I said, Heavenly Father, forgive Brother Way for his error. And I called for his spirit to return. He said, Brother Man, there he was alive again. Don't get, if anything gets away, just keep quiet. Keep quiet. But the church gets all four up, then you see you grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to praise God for something, that's good. But when everybody's jumping, watching this and that, and people getting up, walking around, talking to one another, it, it just confusing you. Jesus couldn't even heal the people that way himself. Is that right? right? When he was here, he led it outside the city like that. Put his hands on his face. Now, now this lady said here, she's a woman younger than I am. She looks healthy and strong. I don't know. Now see, the church of yesterday, God's vindication time, lay hands upon her, pray for her, let her go to she has faith to be healed. That's the way God did it. But he promised something else to her. See, the word of promise for today. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Now, I'm getting in position here somewhere. I think this is better. Now, if this lady, I don't know her, but the Holy Ghost tells me, I hear it's exactly a Bible picture. Remember, if you ever over there, the sign of that well still there, and by and forth comes out, Jesus met a woman. And he told her what her trouble was. And she knew that was the sign of the hour that the Messiah was there. Is that right? She knew. She knew. Well, he's the same today and promised to redeem himself the same. Then it has to be his sign again. Now, I hope everybody understands it. I'm not meaning that's me, or I'm not meaning it's my brother's here, or some man out there. I mean it's Jesus. Right, not the anointing. See, he died that he might cause his ministry to be carried on by his church that recognizes his word. I don't mean it makes anything different to me and just one of these men here. It's not a bit. For one out there, we're all sinners. Saved by grace, but it's his promise. Promise to do it. That's the reason I'm standing here now, because he promised it. He said, go do it. Yeah. So that there's no fear. My lady, I want you to look at these this morning, teaching and preaching. Usually when I have my most successful meeting in the journey and so forth, it's when you see the manager and preach. Mr. Pastor and then in the street a while, I didn't have people walk out on the platform, come out of the room, see some more praise, walk right out, they already had a prayer line lined up. I just went by you see, but now you have to swing yourself back around. Preaching is a gift. It's far as far as preaching. And the gift, some are apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, some evangelists. That's the gift that's in the church. But it's possible we can have more than one, like Paul or any of those. Now, if, as long as there's a prophet, there's got to be a prophet. As long as there's a prophet, there's got to be an, an evangelist. Why is it ministry say there is a pastor and an evangelist, but there's no prophet? That's picking what you want to make it say something that does. But God is his own interpreter of his word. He says for the trial. Now, if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me something you've done, or who you are, or whatever I need, mean, I don't know. It's just like a dream. You see something, you just go and stand. And whatever I say, what I see, I say. See? And then that's the sign. See? And there's the voice of the sign. The sign is to do it. The voice is what it says. Then if that's true, and that's all true, then what I'm preaching here on this word got to be true. Well, that's the tradition of the calling. 
Now, has that been proved to somebody? Now, the audience believe that with all your heart? Now, this is what it says. Now, I don't know the woman. Here's my hands up, and here's the Word of God, and here's the ministry of sex. See? I don't know the woman. I've never seen her in my life as I know, and we're strangers one to another. I have no way of knowing. In fact, I just told the people to raise up their hands on this table. Now, can we like those people to sign on it? Now, look on me. I mean, I can't stop passing the gate, so I'll give it to another. See, Jesus attracted her attention. See, he knew he had to go up there to the Father and set him up there, but he didn't know the woman come out and thought that was the end. See? And then he talked to her until he found out what a trouble was when he told her. That's what I'm doing right now. It's me getting myself out of the way so he can talk. Now, yes, I can tell you what's wrong with the woman. By the grace of God, I heard all this. She had tumors, and those tumors are in the back. It's back there. You believe that he will heal that and make it well? You, you believe it? You got somebody else you're praying for, too. You believe you'll hear his eyes and make him well, you little boy? They just take that one thing to break it down. Yes. Please. All right. Go ahead, Bob. She didn't catch it at first, but she's holding that on her mind. I see a light kept flashing back over again like that because she was praying for something else, and whatever it was, that it was. Yes. If you just believe, boy, if you could explain it. Now, that ought to make every person in here. This, that one person ought to make every person in your believe right now. Is that right? Yeah. How do you do? Now we are strangers with one another than another. We are strangers. I have no idea about you, who you are, where you come from, or, or anything about you. The common. Now, he will reveal to me what your trouble is. Will you believe me to be his servant? Now, now, be just as quietly as you can. Now, yes, you're, you're suffering with a high blood pressure. That's right. It's from the nervous condition that makes your blood go high. And, and you get wore out with that. And very good person. And he's, not a hitchhiker, she believes me, she really believes me. And I, I'm a thankful part of her. And say, by the way, this is just a nice person. You have a really a sick family. Your husband's sick too. He has high blood pressure too. He also has heart trouble. You've got a son, and he's got heart trouble. And then you've got one that you're worried about. It's something dark, the boy is shattered, he's a drinker. He's a father of all the drinkers. That's right, isn't that right? Yes, thou all things are possible to them that believe. If if you can believe that what God said is the truth, that's the truth. What you think that God is just the truth is not what he said, he made the promise. So if he makes the promise, that's the truth. That if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Now you think that people have to, to have, they don't, they don't have to be standing on the platform. They, they, don't, they don't have to be here. Not at all. She's just having a wonderful time out there. What about you out in the audience? Do you believe with all your heart? Every one of you? This lady sitting right here looking at me, right there, she suffers with heart trouble, with brown, red, long, dark hair, wearing glasses. You have heart trouble. As soon as it's mentioned about the lady there, something struck up on you. Okay. Now, you're a way away from me, but she does something, did not you? You believe now with all your heart? If you raise up your hand, that's the truth. All right. Now, will you do me a favor? That lady sitting next to you has got her hand up there. She's suffering with a high blood pressure. If she'll believe with all her heart, it'll leave her too. That's why I read her through you. Now, tell me what they touched. What they touched. 
Do you believe God can heal heart trouble sitting there for you? Do you believe He healed your heart? You would if you let Him. If He has done it, if you just believe it. But first, you've got to believe it. You must believe it. You're obligated to believe it because that's the only way that God can heal. Do you believe that with all your heart? This lady sitting here with a dark looking dress on, something wrong with her neck. Do you believe that God will make it well, lady? See? See, you don't have to be a general black woman. Now look, this is due to that light that her and went right back, the lady started crying, sitting right behind her. lady right behind her started weeping. What was it? She had a real strange feeling come over. If that's right, lady, right behind her, raise up your hand. That's right. Real strange feeling come over. Now you believe that did that because he wants to heal you from that stomach trouble to make you well. Do you believe him? Amen. See? If you just believe. Just please. That man sitting out there looking at me so curious with the rheumatism sitting out there will be able to see out there. You believe that God will heal you with the rheumatism and make you well? Did you believe it? God will make you well. If you can believe it. Don't you see that he's just the same yesterday, today, and forever? Can't you believe that with all this? What if I didn't say nothing to you? You know what I'm going to What if I didn't say nothing and just let you go on through? Would you believe it with all your heart? I believe you got me a friend tonight. You believe that God heals you to heal your dad good and make both of you well? You think you come out of the hospital with that heart trouble? Do you believe it? If you jump on the knee, that's all you have to do. Don't you see it, Tim? How do you do it? Look at me just a minute. You have a weakness. That's right. Your mother's sick too, here, isn't she? Mm-hmm. She has heart trouble. You believe that God will heal your mother with a heart trouble? Say it, by the way, just a minute. Your husband gets healed by stomach trouble, too. Say it, just a moment. Your daughter has something wrong with her throat. You believe he healed that also? Yes. Your grandchild has seen himself like a half a little baby. You believe that he's too? Hallelujah! What are we doing? Why don't we believe him? Are you ready to believe him? Then let's stand up on our feet. Why he's calling the Holy Ghost? Stand up and give him praise and believe him. I'm not every one of you. I pronounce that the Holy Ghost is here. The Bible calls him. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let it be. Every one of you give him praise now. Now I'm going to tell you what you've done. You've done the hardest thing you've ever done. These two or three hundred people here all day long. Let me show you in the name of the Lord that I'm lying for what I'm saying. Look, some of you people in here pray. Here. Here's such a lady sitting here with a white coat on, a little white jacket, looking right at her. I think she is a Christian. But she's praying for an eternity. She has arthritis. Do you believe that God can make you well? Heal you? And you can heal. The next man said he, next to you there has something wrong with his ears. Do you believe God can heal your ear trouble, sir? Make you well? Yes. Raise up your hand if you can. Now please be reverent just a moment. The man right next to him is suffering with a heart trouble. Do you believe that God can heal you, sir, with a heart trouble? I don't know your stranger to me. Is that right? Your stranger. Well, listen. If God would tell me who you are, would it help you? Can you hear me all right? Your name is Mr. Blackwood. Do you believe you can tell me where you're from? You're from Riverbank, California. If that's right, stand up on your feet. I never seen him in my life. All right. God bless you, sir. Your faith made you well. That lady sitting right next to you that has got nervous trouble. You want to be healed your nervousness? Raise up your hand if you do. Lay your hand over on her, mister, that she'll be healed. The lady sitting next to you now has sugar diabetes with a red dress on. She wants to be prayed for too. See? She wants to be prayed for. Have faith. Here's a lady sitting way back here. 
She's ready for an operation if she can just, oh God, she's got a fallen wound. Her name is Miss Maxwell. Believe me. Raise up. Accept your healing. You don't have a prayer card, do you? You don't have a prayer card. All right? You don't need one. Raise up your hand. That's right. I don't know you. If that's right, wave your hand. We're strangers to one another. Wave your hand. Like this. What did she touch? She never touched me. Mr. Stewart, would you want to be healed too? Nervousness and believe that God will make you well. I'm a stranger to you, but that's who you are. And you suffer with the nervousness. You can't hardly hold yourself together. Stand up on your feet and accept your healing in the name of Jesus. There's a lady sitting back behind you there. She's got a nervousness too. She's got something wrong in the muscle in her body. She's going to miss it. In. Mrs. Newell, stand up. Is that your name? That's who you are? Believe. You believe? Sure. Here's a lady sitting right here. She's got a heart trouble and down blood pressure. You believe that right, sister? Stand up at this time. The lady sitting next to you there. She's got something in her chest. That's right. Stand up. person there that I know, all that's in this crowd, and I don't know, you probably prayer cards are all over the place. But you sitting out there that's sick or got a need or something, and you know that I know nothing about you, raise up your hand. It's just everywhere you are. See? It's just everywhere. May the Lord help us now. Just, uh, don't, no one move. Don't, please, no one move. This is a, a great thing. Now, you know the end stand trying to explain it. There's no way of doing it. Now, the Bible said, which is the word, that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Now, sometimes faith is unknown to you. You got it and you don't know it. You try to push yourself into something, you miss it. You go over the top of it. It's a humble simple. And he is a high priest that can be touched by our infirmities. Then if you touch him, He'd act like he did before. Is that right? Now watch. You see this woman sitting right down here? I don't know the little soul. She's just sitting there, but somehow she's in contact with God. Because in the dimension that I'm now looking in, I see the woman. And she's conscious that something's going on. She's praying for her children who's not here. That is right. I don't know her, I've never seen the woman, but she was deeply concerned about the children. Do you believe me to be his servant? Do you believe that, that Jesus Christ is here, the Holy Spirit, who, you see, if we can get ourselves out of the way, see, not to heal you, I can. See, or to give you your desire, I can. See, that has to come through God, let you tell me, tell you. Now, but if he can reveal to me what the matter with that child or whatever it is, you, you will believe me to be his servant? You will. Now, the whole audience, if you wish, the lady said he might, would you stand up? Now, the Bible ain't here before me. I do not know the woman. I've never seen her. I hear her. Come right back to the audience. Please, everyone, be ready. When you see something, see it's the spirit, it's moved, throws me off of it. Yes, the lady has three children she's praying for, and all three of them is shattered. That is, they are not Christians. 
your unfaith. That is right. One of them is a girl, and she has a sore on her leg up high. That's right, isn't it? One, something wrong with her eyes on the ball. Another has got heart trouble. And it's an alcoholic. That's true. Is that your desire? Is that what you want from God? Then I ask in Jesus' name that He gives you what you desire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you need Hallelujah. Here's a lady, just as I said that, the server. She's sitting right back here. She's suffering with arthritis. Her name is Miss Thompson, that she won't know. I am a stranger to you. I never seen you in my life, but that's who you are. Do you believe me to be a servant, lady? Do you believe what I've said is true and comes from God? You're suffering with arthritis. That's your husband sitting there by you. He's suffering too. He has something wrong in his, his veins. It's called hardening of the artery. Right? He has something wrong with his feet also. That is right. And then you're trying to quit drinking. You want to do it. You're an alcoholic. But you're trying to quit drinking. You believe me to be his servant? Would you accept me as God's servant? Then I'd deliver you from that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory And you believe, sir. Give your heart to Christ. See the ministers about baptism and the things over for you. You just believe. You believe? If thou canst believe. Got something wrong with your side, have you, honey? If you believe with all your heart, God will heal you. Sitting here next to you, have diabetes. Do you believe that God will heal the diabetes for you and make you well? Heart trouble. Do you believe God will heal the heart trouble? Also, heart trouble next. Do you believe God will heal the heart trouble next? That's right. Do you believe He'll do that? This big lady sitting here a few minutes ago, when I was preaching, come down about identifying yourself, she looked right straight towards me. You were healed, and you had kidney trouble. Lord. That's right, stand up on your feet. Yeah. Well, you know, what's the strange feeling come to you when I said that about identifying yourself? You had a real strange feeling, look right straight to me. That's what it's up to. Go on now, you way. Just believe God. That's all. See, the Word is made manifest. Watch your breath, sir. You believe God can heal you with heart trouble, make you well? The man with the gray hair, nice looking fellow sitting there. You believe God will heal the heart trouble? You do. Your wife sits there now. You believe God can tell you what's wrong with your wife by the help of God? You believe that God can tell me what's wrong with her? It's anemia, a blood condition. That's right. You believe God will make you both well now? You do? You accept it? Now the lady sitting next to her, see that going down there? That lady has something wrong with her back. You believe God will heal the back trouble, lady, and make you well? The man next to you has arthritis. You believe God will heal you the arthritis, sir? You accept it? You do? Got your hand up? All right. How about the little lady sitting on the right at you right next to you? Yes, she prayed for her mother. Mother in the hospital with infection. That's right. You put up your hand right next to your sister. It wasn't the mother you were praying for. This lady's praying for her mother in the hospital. But you, your daddy's got cancer and you're praying for. Him. That's right. The next lady has lung trouble. You believe God will heal the lung trouble? Uh, now I see you. Just got this coming. It's blinded almost. He's got 20 or 30 people up there. Huh? Who are you identified with? Amen. Are you identified as saying, I am a believer, I believe God, or I believe that this is Him? Do you identify, are you can be identified with that word that God promised that what Jesus did then, He did again today, and I believe that we're living in the days of Sodom, and just before the destruction of the world, and Jesus promised that He had manifest Himself again just like He did at Sodom, like He was doing there, and like He's doing now. Do you believe it? Then all of you that have prayer cards in this one row here, this section here, Stand up against the wall that way. Go right out of your place. Stand up against the wall. All over this top. Now, let those that are in this section and have prayer towards the middle section stand up in this aisle. Stand out this way. Don't, don't move over now. Stand out of the aisle. Now wait. 
I want this, this crowd over on this side to stand this way. Look, turn this way. I want this crowd to go around this way. Go back to the aisle. Go back that way and come around and join yourself over here. Now, all that's in this other section that has prayer cards, stand up in this aisle this way. That's right. Come out here. You go back towards the back and join behind me. Now, you're either going to see a complete flop, or you're going to see the glory of God. Now, what are you identified today with believers? Or you have to be entertained, or are you going to believe God? Some of them in the Bible time, as even the shadow of St. Peter, a fisherman who couldn't sign his name, the shadow of that man that showed the same sign that you've seen here today, passed over the people and they were healed. How many knows that's true? Now, if there be a pastor here that believes in praying for the sick, I don't want to leave you people think he stand up here as an evangelist and, and with a gift of discernment and so forth like that and the prophetic hour that we're living in to make you think that your pastor just ain't just as much as anybody else. He's a servant of Christ with the same authority that I have or anybody else has. Our authority is Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to have them come down here and pray with me while we're praying. Um, every pastor in here that believes in divine healing and wants to stand with us here, will you come and take your stand with me here while I'm praying for the sick? Any of you pastors that wants to come, this group of pastors, sponsoring pastors, I ask the mayor so it makes no difference what the pastor is, what church he belongs to. If you're Presbyterian, Lutheran, or Catholic priest, come here and stand with us if you believe the message of Christ. That you believe in divine healing, come here and lay your hands upon us. Surely you wouldn't you wouldn't separate as a servant of Christ, you wouldn't separate yourself from your from the human beings, no matter whether they belong to your 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 manse or not, or your parish. You wouldn't separate yourself from them. You'll believe. Now, you're welcome to come here and help with me laying hands upon these sick people that they might be healed. All right, I think the lines are about ready to start. I want the ushers now to get their places so they can help with the people. Now, so that we don't, everybody will understand. Now, listen real close. Can you hear? Say amen. Say it again. Look, I'm going to give you a, I, I can't take each person, stand there and pray with them and have the sermon. I go about five or six more and they'll be taking you away to the bill. You know that. Jesus, a woman touched him and he turned around and told her what her trouble was all about and he said, virtue's gone out of his strength. One person. And that was God. Manifested his flesh. This is just a little gift. To manifest him. A promise to you for the day. Notice, friend, Peter one time was called on the scene where there's a woman dead by the name of Dorothy. All of you remember, say amen. amen. And he went over and knelt down and prayed. Ask her, listen how you keep in the prayer line. After he prayed, he went over and laid hands on Dorothy and she came to life. Is that right? Now, brethren, I want you in this congregation to join in with me. Look here, stand here, about 500 people, or maybe more, standing here this afternoon to be prayed for. Now, let us pray a prayer of faith, each one of us. And then when the people come by, when you lay your hands up on them, lay them up on there with faith that it's going to happen. I'm going to believe. I'm, I'm, with all my heart, I'm going to believe. Our Heavenly Father, now the great march will start through here. Hundreds of people will pass through and under these ministers' hands. Let them realize, Lord, that they're just passing under the cross. They're passing under the where the blood was shed to make this what we're doing to be real. For he that hung on the cross said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. And let the people accept it. You promised you would save whosoever will. You can't 
saved the world because whosoever will won't believe me. You went into a city, many many words you couldn't do because of unbelief. Neither will you be able to help one person to come through this line unless they're willingly from the bottom of their heart to identify themselves with the believers and the word of God that the thing's over. May this great identification come now. That when each of these people passes under the hands of these ministers, may the Holy Spirit place into their heart that they have did the bidding of God. And may they go out of here rejoicing, healed for the kingdom of God. We obey you, Lord, in this act, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want someone, Roy, come here if you will, and saying, only believe, I want the rest of your heads bowed, and everybody praying. Now, these are mothers, fathers, and children, little sick babies, people dying with cancer. If it was you, you want somebody sincere. And we want that sincerity. Now, let's all bow our heads now. I'm going to step down here among my brethren to pray for this one. You know, it's been a most wonderful time in this fellowship. Now, I've noticed something this afternoon. I don't know whether you did or not. Ninety percent of those people that were healed were healed before they even got to where I was at. Praise the Lord. They were screaming and shouting and giving God praise before they got there. Now, we're going to pray for these handkerchiefs. Lord Jesus, we know that in the Bible they said they took from the body of St. Paul. Not because he was Paul, but because that he was your servant, Lord. He was your ambassador. And we know that they say that sickness and diseases departed. Many people could not attend the meeting, and they sent a handkerchief to represent them. God, let the angel of the Lord, he was the one who looked down upon the Red Sea and he got it scared. And Israel went on to their promise. Granted, Lord, that this will be the same. May these handkerchiefs laid upon the sick heal the sick. For the kingdom of God's sake. In Jesus' name, I ask you. Amen. Now, I just want to say a word to you, because I really appreciate you. I appreciate the fine minister. All down the line, having your time, help, everything. Maybe you might have thought, brother, that while the discernment was going on and so forth down here, I didn't know what you were praying about. But the Lord Jesus reminded me of it. I know what. Don't worry about your mom. She'll be all right. And you stay there. Let sign up and see me go. I know it all along. You're going to be over it. Don't worry. See? It was behind the scenes what you're in front. She knows all about it. See? Now you come through the prayer line with the same God that would anoint you before the service. Here he is doing the same thing. Just the, and he's just the same yesterday. Do you believe it? Oh, isn't he wonderful? This is this something. Yeah, how many know this song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds Our Hearts in Christian Love? Could you give How many out there does not have a prayer card? And you want Jesus to heal you, you know he can heal you. Raise your hand. I don't care if you're a balcony, wherever you are. Now look, if you don't, that woman that touched the garment while they're lining him up, that woman that touched his garment, she didn't have any prayer card, maybe. But she said, now listen closely. She said within her heart, I believe that man. If I can touch his garment, I'll be made whole. She had a blood issue. How many remembers the story? She slipped through the crowd, maybe crawled around between them, little pale, sickly woman, and she touched his garment, and the Palestinian garment hangs loose. He'd never feel that. I wouldn't feel if you touched my pocket. And my coat fits me tight. But then Palestinian garments and they have an underneath garment. And she touched his garment. And he stopped and said, who touched me? She went back out in the audience. He said, well, Peter said, Lord, that don't sound good. Everybody's touching you. He said, but I perceive I've gotten weak. Virtue, strength went out of me. How many remembers it? And he looked all around through the audience until he found her. Is that right? And said, thy faith has saved thee. Is that right? Now look, minister, does the Bible say that Jesus Christ, Hebrews 3, is a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? How many knows the Bible says that? Well, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, how would he act today as he did yesterday? Sure. 
Now you see, would do no good to touch me. I'd be like your brother, your husband, your father, whatever it might be. Wouldn't be no virtue in me. But if you, your faith can touch him, then watch him turn. Just try it. Don't try it. That's too much today to try. You do it. I'd be real reverent. Be quiet. Um, I've just a few moments. Well, tell these things that I said that sounded good, but you see, are they true or not? That's the next thing. Is this all? I hear the Mohammed talk, Sikhs, James, Buddha, oh my, Mohammed. But they can they can talk about something that was. But what about now? If he isn't, if he's a god of history, he's no good to us today. If he's a god of history only. If he isn't the same yesterday and forever, then the Bible told something wrong. Now, if he can get me in his submissive will, if he can get you in his will, then working between us, see, that's where the power of God comes. Now, if that man is sick, I want him to sit right where he's at. And now, can you see him from the audience? He's sitting right here. Bring his chair right up here if you want to. Can you feel like walking over here, sir? All right. Just come right here and sit down. Bring the chair right here, Brother Grant, if you will, so the man can sit here just a moment. All right. Now just sit down right there, sir. I've been noticing a man for a few minutes just about to pass out. Must be seriously sick. I do not know. And if I did know, and could help him, and wouldn't do it, then I'm not fit to stand behind this platform here and talk to you people, you Christians. But the man probably is not as old as I, and this is our, probably we're unknown to each other. You don't know me, I suppose. Yes, I do. You know me, but I don't know you. I was in the Jonesboro. Oh, you saw me at Jonesboro about 15 years ago when I was over there. Yes, sir. Well, that was a great time over there. I believe that was Brother Richard Reed. Uh -huh. Now. If this man is sitting here suffering, if I could heal him and wouldn't do it, what kind of a person would I be? But I can't heal him. But now, if we would see Jesus, and Jesus was standing here with this suit of clothes on that he gave me, now would Jesus say, come here and I'll heal you? I'd be careful if you know your Bible. No, sir. He's already done it. He couldn't do it today. He's already done it. He was wounded for our transgression. With his stripes we were saved. With his stripes we were healed. Right. Now, but Jesus could declare himself to make him known to this man what's his trouble or something, a matter or something he's done. Is that right? And that would let him know that Christ was here because I don't know him. Here's my hands up. I, he said he was in the Jonesboro meeting that was 15 years ago. I, I've never seen the man in my life. I know he might have stepped back tomorrow. Well, I don't know any yet. I believe I know this is Mr. Way sitting right here, an Englishman that's sitting right here that I know dropped dead in my church the other day in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Dropped dead. There's his wife here somewhere that's a nurse. While I was speaking, the man dropped dead, fell right there dead. Went out and laid hands upon him. Here he's saying. If I could just get the congregation quite long enough so the Holy Spirit could come down. Don't get excited. Just sit still. Now, sir, I want you to look up this way just a minute. I've been speaking in uh, I'm here to help you. Now, if I can help you, I'll do everything I can. Now, what I've said here in the Scripture, God's obligated because I believe this is the last day. God is obligated to, to fulfill that word. And uh, that's what He promised to do. And if He would be able to tell me something you have done, or something's wrong with you, or what you're here for, or whatever it is, you'd know whether that's true or not. You, you, you're a witness of that. But now if I come up here and lay hands on you and say, Glory to God, you're healed, glory to God, that would be all right. That's perfectly all right. You believe it. But what if he tells you what you have done? Or some cause or reason you are sick? Or something like that. Then you know if he could tell you what has been, he'd sure know what, what will be with you like. You believe that, audience? Amen. Now, what am I doing to the man? I'm trying to contact his spirit, just as our Lord did at the well to that woman. I don't know him. I've never seen him. 
Now, as many in here sick, many praying, and our Heavenly Father, we take every spirit in here under our control for the glory of God that your scriptures might be fulfilled. The Bible said that's why Jesus healed, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And that's the reason you're showing mercy in this last day, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. We just talked to them tonight. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you look on me just a moment, just to see if the Lord will reveal to me what's your trouble. And if he will, will you, if he tells me what's your trouble, it looks like you're very sick, if you tell me what's wrong with your something, you'll believe and you know it's got to be him. How many audience will believe? <laughs> One thing you're suffering tremendously with is a hernia. That turn is make me sick. That's right. Yeah. Uh, is that right? Take your hand. That's what's making me sick. Down. Yeah. You bleed? Yes. Here's another thing. You got a spot on the right side of your face. You're worried about that. Let me tell you something else. You believe me to be a prophet? Yes, sir. You got a spot on your right hip too, underneath your clothes. That's right. Raise up your hand. Yes, How do you believe? Be well. Jesus Christ, will be well. Go believe him. Hey, just come this way if you don't be ugly. Go believe him now everything will be all right for you. You believe now? Just have faith. All right. That, you know, I don't know. I don't know you. We're strangers to one another, I suppose. If that's right, so the audience can see that we're strangers. If This is just like where our Lord met a woman one day. And here we meet again, we meet after 2,000 years on his promise, and here's a man and woman meet in the same way. I've never seen you in my life. I guess we're total strangers, but God knows both of us. Now, if the Holy Spirit, Christ, in here, in you, will reveal what you're standing here for or something about you, would you feel enthused like that woman did that day? Now, what you're here for is prayer, and prayer is for a condition in your breast. That's right. If that's true, raise up your hand. Now, you believe God can tell me which breast it is? It's the right breast. That's right. People keep staying out there, thought so I can just say guessing that. I'm not guessing that. Don't think that. That hand is I remember you can't hide your thoughts now. <laughs> here, you should believe you're a preacher. I believe the preacher. That's right, isn't it? Mark, go believe me. I'm going to do all of it. God bless you. You believe? How do you do? We're strangers with each other. I don't know you. God bless you. That's right. Raise up your hand. So you're a lot younger than I am. Maybe the woman that met our Lord was a lot younger than Now, another woman stood here, somebody out there believing. There she sits right there. She's got trouble in her chest. Is that right? Whose garment did you touch? His. It's over now. Jesus Christ thinks you well. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, that woman was 20 feet from me. But she touched not me, she touched the high priest. Don't you see? I had my back to her. It shows that he is the same one that made the promise. That's the same thing. You're suffering with a nervous trouble. Very nervous. Especially in the late of the evening when you get tired and wore out. You're real nervous. Then you have a poison in your body. Poison in your blood. But trying. And then you've got a real burden for somebody to be saved, haven't you? That's right. That's right. You believe now? All right, go. If you have any, faith. Don't doubt. Have faith in God. Just believe. How do you do, lady? I'm a stranger to you, I suppose. If that's right, so we hold up our hands so that they'll see. I've never seen her in my life. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? If the Lord Jesus will tell this woman 
right here now. Something about her that I know nothing about. She, well, for strangers, we, she's just standing here, see. All right? Would you believe? You got stomach troubles bothering you. Sitting right there with a black coat on. It's bothering you right now. That's right, raise up your hand. Mm-hmm. You know why? It's this woman's stomach, too. Mm-hmm. See? That's right. See that black streak running between them there? It's a devil, see? He's trying to get away from it, see? He can't. He can't hide from God. That's one thing sure. We're in the presence of Jesus Christ. You must believe, have faith. What did he touch? He never touched me. I don't know the man. He's a stranger to me. Are we strangers to one another, sir? I don't know you. Raise up your hand if that's right. See? What did he touch? Jesus Christ. Don't fail to see something. Now, uh, this lady here, yes, oh, the lady shattered this death upon her. She's suffering with cancer, and the cancer is in the stomach and also in the core. She, uh, they just gave her up. She's dying of cancer. That's true, isn't it, lady? That's what she's been told. Now, look here. You're... There's only one hope you have. That's Christ. You believe me to be his servant. Something's got to tell me that, hasn't it? Something's got to. I, I don't want to know it myself. If I tell you who you are, would you believe me to be his prophet? Would it help you? Would you look? Miss Crosley? Then you turn to home. <laughs> you believe? How many of you believe now with all your heart? Stand up on your feet and accept it. Just raise that up and say, I believe. Raise up your hands everywhere. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the devil and all these powers be rebuked. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who is promised of this for the last day he's here now, let it come to pass, Lord, at this hour, that the people will not fail. May they see what God's shaking before them just before the fire falls. May this Abraham group, this royal seed of Abraham, understand the hour that we're living. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, touch every sick person in here. Heal them, Lord. May their faith realize that they're standing in the presence of the God that saved them and will touch them at that day. May His power fall upon them now and heal everyone here in this now, how many believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Raise up your hand. How many knows that this is the truth? That Hebrews 3 says that right now, he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. How many knows that? Well, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, only he's not in physical form, when he returns like that, time is over. He'll take the church with him. But he's sharing the form of the Holy Ghost to come into me and into you. And perform his same works. He said in John 14, 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Is that right? And if the word is in us and we're telling the truth, and it is the word that he promised for a day, then isn't the word of God sharper than a two-edged sword and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart? Does the Bible say that? Was not all the prophets could discern the thoughts in, in the people's mind? Is that right? Why? It was the word that was in them. God's word for that day. See? That's how they were vindicated. That was their credentials. None of them belonged to an organization, not one. Never did. Their credentials were their ministry. God said, if there be one among you spiritual prophet, what he says comes to pass, and hear him. For I'm with him. But if it don't come to pass, well, don't hear him. It must not just be once. It must continually, all the time. From prophets. There's a gift of prophecies in the church, which is to be examined by the by the examiners before it can be told to the church, of course. Let it be before two or three judges and then told her. But a prophet is born a prophet, predestinated, foreordained. Jeremiah, but God said, before you even form in your mother's wombs, I ordained you a prophet over the nation. John the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. See? Sure. Notice, now when Jesus is here on earth, he made the sacrifice for healing and for salvation. Do we believe that? Jesus could not come tonight and save you. 
He's already done it. The sin question was settled. He's the Lamb of God that take, took away the sins of the world. He was wounded for our transgression. With his stripes we were healed. It's a past sense. No matter how much you scream out, how much you scream out, that wouldn't do a bit of good until you accept it. And he's the high priest sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high to make intercessions on our profession. You've got to accept it and profess it. Correct. Same way by healing. But what if he was standing here tonight, wearing this suit that he gave me? What would he do in the prayer line? How would you know it was Jesus? See? Now, as far as somebody comes and says, oh, Jesus, will you heal me? You have already done it. Now, if you had nail scars in the hand, anybody could have that. <laughs> Any scar could be. But what it is, how do you know the, what do you know the, what kind of vine it is? It's what kind of life it's got in it. And every vine, if the first, the first branch that come out of that vine, Jesus Christ, they wrote a book of Acts behind it. Is that right? If it ever puts forth another one, they'll write another book of Acts. Or if it bore grapes, the first one, the next time you can't have lemon. But a lemon vine can live in that if the citrus fruit. But it's living of its own. It'll always bring forth lemons. It's a grafted vine into it. But if the vine itself puts forth a branch, it'll bear fruit like the first one did. Or it'll be the life that's in Jesus Christ will be in that vine. That's right. Jesus said, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he also. Now, if he was sure, he would be known by his life and by the things that he promised for this age. How many were sure last night to see your hand? In fact, they all of us. All right? Now, there's people, everyone in that line, as far as I know, is a total stranger to me. If that's right, raise up your hand. Each one. Is it a you stranger? How many out there are strangers to me? All right? Only thing I ask you to do is have faith and believe that I've told you the truth. Now, look. Christ promised these things for the last day. Now, I know you've had great warriors here in the city, perhaps all Roberts and all like the late Jack Cole and those great men of faith. They lived their time. But remember, the last sign that the Gentile world seen before the promised son arrived in Abraham's time, which is the father of all, and Jesus promised the same thing, the last sign that was showed to the church elected. Now, remember. There was one, two went down and preached into Sodom. They never showed this sign. Neither is it today. But to the called out church, the sign was showed, and so did Jesus prophesy to be the same name. God manifested in flesh, discerning the thoughts that's in the heart. Now, he promised that. Both heavens and earth will fail, but that won't. Now, if he will manifest that to show that he's your present, how many of you will believe him for your healing and whatever you have need of? Our Lord Jesus, now it's to you, Father. Whatever your will is, let it be done. I'm your servant. These are all your servants, or many of them in here. Let those who are not your servants, by your presence, knowing that maybe before morning they'll have to look upon your face. Now you can smile upon them with grace, but then you'll be their judge. Let it come to pass, Lord, that Jesus will come among us tonight and perform and do like he did before his crucifixion will be assured to us in the face of all heathen religion that our Savior is not dead but has risen from the dead and after 2,000 years is just as alive tonight as he was then. And may we like those from Emmaus say, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the road? Let thy presence be known. May we see you tonight in the power of your resurrection. And then may the people believe then, Lord, because of your great August presence, we ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, I take every spirit, each one of you, our spirit. Remember, you've never seen me. You see this old war out hull here that declares this voice. Now, this voice either is coming from God or it's not. Same as yours. This voice is just packed around this hull, which I'll swap it someday for a new one. That won't get old. But, friend... Each one a spirit. So when you move, see, when you have control there, see, it interrupts this set real still. Be in prayer. I want you, if God does something, you should be thankful to me. Certainly. Praise him. Then be reverent and watch this set real still and believe with all your heart. Now, you out there that has no prayer cards, no matter where you are, you just believe and say this, Lord Jesus, 
What he told us is in the Bible. We, I know that you promised that. And I know it has to be you. It can't be that man. He's a man like I am. Or like my husband. Or like my son or brother or what more. See? But a gift is not something, a knife that you take and go do things with. A gift. Uh, uh, some of these days we'll go get in a big tent and come to the city and this day for about months at a time. It keeps it. A gift is getting yourself out of the way so God can come in. See, what he shows, what he does. A gift is not, I got power to do this, I got power. Your power of a gift is get yourself out of the way, and the gift that God has given you operates through that. And see, after you out of the way. See, now I can't make him tell me nothing. He has to do it. Now, to stay time, I'm real late. But come here, lady. I want you to stand right here. I was speaking a few moments ago about a woman at the, at the well. Was you here last evening? You wasn't here. Have you ever been one of the meetings before? Never been before. That's your first time. We're strangers. She wasn't even here last night. Never had instructions on it. Nothing but just stand here. Now, we're standing. You remember the story of the woman at the well? There's a little panoramic, something like this, and a man... The woman met for the first time in life. Now, this woman was in, she was in, she was in Chile, and she had married too many times, and she, and she was living with a man she wasn't married to, and, and it was a very bad thing. And Jesus spoke to her. Now, you remember, he said in St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. That doeth the Son likewise. Therefore, Jesus never performed one thing without first seeing it in a vision, or he told something wrong there. The Son does nothing until he sees the Father do it first. Not hears him, sees him do it. And then the Father, he had need to go by Samaria. He was going to Jericho, but he went up to Samaria, the city of Sychar. And he met this woman, and he began to talk to her until he found where her trouble was. Then he told her her trouble, and quickly, her in that condition, she recognized that that was the sign of the Messiah. Well, if that's him yesterday, it'd be the same one today, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true, audience? Yeah. Now, we are meeting for our first time. I'm not he, and you're not she, but he still is God. That's right. Now, if you can have faith in, in what I'm saying, in the Word, I'll never say nothing of what's in this Word. He might do things outside of that word, but as long as he does that, I know that's right. Yes. And now, you don't know me, I don't know you, so therefore, if you were sick, and I lay hands up on you, or like that great warrior, uh, Brother uh, Roberts, or some of those, Brother Allen, or some of those men lay hands up on you and say, Hallelujah, the Lord heals you. That's good. If <laughs> you believe that, it'll work. Amen. But now, what if he stands here and tells something that you have done, or some reason that you're sick, or something that's happened down through life, or something you ought not have done, or that, that you know that that had to be right, right? Clear your mind. That's right. That's right. Well, it's yours out there? Now, what am I talking to the woman about? See, I never skip on that message tonight. I got the perseverance. See, it would change me into preaching. Now, I have to come back to the sermon, relaxing myself, getting William Graham over on the side. How many ever seen that picture that was taken here in Houston? You, it's your top front here now. See? That's hanging up the side between me and the woman right now. They're just kneeling right around. If the woman wanted to witness it, she knows in the last few seconds there has been something like a real sweet feeling. That's right, raise up your hand. See, I'm looking right at it. See, it's like living in another dimension. I'm watching it through the woman. Now, the lady, one thing, she's extremely nervous. And that's what you want me to pray for. And that's just natural cause right now because of this time of life that you're living in, getting this age and so forth. That makes you nervous. Another thing, you've got something in your side. It's, a, it's like little pockets of air, like gutters in your side. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Raise up your hand. <laughs> now, see, now, there that is again. Somebody saying you get you should, I'm going to call who that is one of these days, see? Don't, you can't hide yourself now. The, the Word is here itself. Not me, friend. I'm just your brother. But the Word is here. Here. She's a good person. Let's see if I get that. I don't know now what I said. It'll have to come through that tape. Well, I know. Now, just a moment. Yes. Uh, yes, she, she gets nervous. Which that's a cause from a, a time or age and things. She's, and then another thing. You've had a, an operation. Yes, sir, I 
and that was a female affair some time ago. That's right. That's made you nervous there than ever. That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, that made you nervous because at this time of life made you more nervous. Now you think I'm guessing? Here's another thing. There's a, a girl with you, a little girl, and she's here, and she's sucking with mumps. Yes, that right? That not that. And there's a woman, another woman friend of yours, and she's got uh, mental oppression, right? You heard this in the Is that right? Say, now, when you go back, lay a handkerchief up on them, mumps will eat, and she'll get over it, you'll be well. Go read it in the name of the Lord. You believe? That was Jesus yesterday. That's Jesus today. You have to know that, that somebody, see, somebody has, now that look, that was behind you, see. See, it's not, I couldn't do that. You, you know it's got to be some power, don't you? You believe it's the Lord Jesus according to his promise? The Lord bless you. How do you do it? I'm a stranger to you also. I don't know. You've never seen me in my life. We're strangers. This is our first time meeting, as far as I know. But now, if the Lord Jesus should tell me something about yourself, that, uh, something like that lady there, whatever it was, would you believe it? It was the Lord Jesus instead of, it wouldn't be me, you know. And now, uh, you could, like the Pharisees say, it's Beelzebub, an evil spirit. And because the, they said the Spirit of God that was doing that work in him was an evil spirit, it was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, which should never be forgiven when this comes this day. That's the reason this nation stands in judgment today. It's nothing left for it but judgment. It's full of Jack Rubens and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it, it can't be nothing else happened to it but judgment. Now, you're ill. You've been in a, to a doctor. He really would advise an operation. That operation is on the colon. That's true, isn't it? Here's another thing. You're desperately in need of a spiritual. You haven't been feeling right. You kind of washed away a little more to come back. Well, you're back now. I don't believe you. In all your heart, you'll get better. You just can't it. Your sins are forgiven. Now, I don't say sins forgiven. He said that. See, it wasn't me. It's him. You believe? Now, I'd also make the rest of you just know that it's him here. Isn't that right? If you just believe. Just have faith. Don't doubt. Be reverent and believe God. Now, see, you're in his presence. Now, if one of those discernments made the Son of God say virtue went out, what do you think it would do to me, a sinner saved by his grace? Be, you know what it would be? Just a moment. Well, it isn't a woman. <laughs> Say you that was just healed there, lady, going back to your seat. Look to me just a moment. There's a, a man sitting right in front of you there that has sinus trouble. Sitting right there. And, you, know, you believe that God will make you well? You do? All right. <laughs> Tell me what he touched. I don't know the man never seen him in my life. If that's right, wave your hand if we're strangers to one another. <laughs> now look, if you might know something else, his wife sitting by him there. You believe God can tell me what's wrong with her? Will you believe me to be his prophet or his servant? Will you do it? She's got hay fever. If that's right, raise up your hand, lady. <laughs> now if you both believe, you touch something, believe not I believe it. You believe God? No doubt, have faith in God. Here's a man. I've never seen this man. He's quite a bit younger than I, and I've never seen him before. If we're strangers, sir, to each other, raise up your hand. I've never seen him. Now let's take a picture in the Bible. Let's take when um, when uh, Jesus met Simon. Peter, I'd imagine him being a man, something about that age, his hair thinning, when Jesus met him. I watch him talk to him. Now, if I don't know the man, never seen him, both of us with their hands up, we're total strangers to each other. Now, the others is women. Let's see about this man. Now, you look at me just a moment, as your brother. And now, 
if the Lord would say something that you have done or something that you ought to have done or ought not have done or whatever it is, you'll know whether it's the truth or not. You know, and then if he can tell you what's wrong with you or something is on your mind, what your sickness is or, or something like that, tell you something, that you, you know what's the truth or not. Then if he can tell you what has been and you know what's true or not, if he tells you what's going to be, then you know it's got to be true. Now, would that make everyone in here just take the time of this man and talk with this is a person? Now, you look at this way just a moment as we talk. May the Lord help me now. And you believe what the Bible says is true. You believe that this is the hour that Jesus is to come, that the church has come from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, just like a pyramid, like that coming. And now the top stone is going to have to be so perfect till when the headstone comes, it has to blend right with it. The ministry has started out like this, and it's come to the minority all the time, getting smaller groups and smaller groups. And to find the stone meets with the building. He's the headstone, takes the whole building with him, which is the church. All them are raised up, come back from the first watch on to the seventh, and all go into the rapture. Each one had their day allotted to them. They had their reformers and founders and so forth all down through it. And this last day, it's coming to an eagle again, which is back in the prophetic age, to bring this together. Do you believe that? The word is gone. They're coming on. You have a very fine feeling to you, sir. Now, what's your trouble? You've had an accident. In that accident, you were gas with carbon oxide gas. That's true. It poisons you. It poisons you in your liver. You had trouble with that. You had trouble with your stomach. You had trouble with your heart. And it's made you so nervous until you built yourself in a complex. You're poor. You must go back to work. But you're afraid to go back to work. You're afraid of that carbon oxide gas. But it's going to be all right. I remember. If, if Jesus Christ will tell me who you are, with, now that thing's is true, wasn't it? If he'll tell me who you are, will you accept it and know and go on back and be a good cheer when you do it? Your name is Mr. Wagner. Go on back on your road. Do you believe now? With all your heart you believe? If thou canst believe, all things are all things are possible to them that believe. Now, do you believe that God will heal that female trouble for you? Well, it's going all across the platform. <laughs> now, lady, when you get up of the morning, you're stiff. You can't hardly move around very much. Arthritis. But you believe that God heals arthritis? All right, go on your own. Say, thank you, Lord. Well, it's your, that's what calls you, are the Lord. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. But first, you've got to believe it. What do you think, sir? Do you believe with all your heart? You believe God heals heart trouble and makes you well? All right, go on your own. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> My lady, you're shattered. That means cancer. You believe God will heal cancer? All right, accept it. Go on your own. Say thank you, dear God. And believe with all your heart. God can heal stomach trouble or anything else. Do you believe that? All right, go on your own. Go on your own. You believe God will heal your female trouble, that drinking? All right, go on your own. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you believe God heals science and asthma and all this stuff makes you well? Go on your own. Rejoice and thank you. Thank you, dear God. What if I didn't say that to you to lay hands on you? you believe it? In the name of the Lord Jesus, and heal. Right. Believe with all your heart. Come, lady. you believe with all your heart? Anemia condition, heart trouble. you believe that God will make you well? Did you go on your own? Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and be made well. Amen. All right, sir. Come, lady. You believe God heals diabetes and makes people well? Do diabetes? Then go on your own. Say, thank you. Amen. Thank you all your heart. God heals nervousness and some trouble, too. you believe he makes you well? Go on your own. Rejoice and eat your supper. Be a good courage. Come. A nervous stomach, too. you believe God will make you well? Go on your own. Eat and be made well. Do with all your heart. You have a little heart clutter, but also your thought got arthritis. You believe God will make you well? Yes. Go on your road and rejoice. You say, thank you, Lord. A nervous stomach calls a pet to call for your things. You believe that God will make you well? Here? Go on your road and say, thank you, Lord. You may well. You got many things. A lady's trouble, one of the great things is the heart trouble. Too much around your heart. You believe God will make you well? Go on your road and rejoice. You say, thank you, Lord. You believe God heals arthritis? Just keep on going. Lord, you believe with all your heart? Now, some of you out in the audience, now be reverent, be reverent. 
You sit still. You believe with all your heart. Now. Look this way. Believe with all your heart. Some of you people out there is not going to be in the prayer line. This little boy sitting out here, the little chubby fellow sitting right there, won't you sit right over him? The little fellow is suffering with a kidney trouble. You believe that God will heal the kidney trouble, Sonny? You believe it? Or right, stand up on your feet and say, I believe it and accept it. All right, God bless you. Go up here. You believe with all your heart? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. What about you just sit down there? Come up with a little boy and sit down. You believe it? Eye trouble, God will heal your eye trouble and make you well? You do? All right, you can have your healing too. All right. You just sit down at the right time. Amen. Go right ahead. It's fine. That's good. All right? Amen. All right, the lady next to you there, she's got trouble with her head. You believe that God will heal your head trouble, lady? All right? Your little girl there suffers with a mental trouble. That's right, isn't it? Lay your hand over on her and believe that she'll get well too. You believe that? This next lady sitting there, she's praying right next to it. She's praying there because of a broke up home. Is that right, lady? Raise up your hand. Believe that your home will be restored again. Have faith. The lady sitting next to her has got a cyst. You believe that God will heal that cyst, lady? Raise up your hand. Accept it. Lady sitting next to her has got throat trouble. You believe that God will heal your throat, lady? Raise up your hand. What's the matter with you people? Don't you see that Jesus Christ? Let us stand up on our feet. Raise up on your feet and accept Jesus as your healer. Oh, Lamb of God. Now, you touch him by faith. Now, Heavenly Father, the meeting is yours. But I have thought tonight on this little woman seeing something real when she's seen that spirit of discernment upon Solomon. And we are sure, Lord, that your words are true. You said that would return again like it was in the days of Sodom just before the coming. And you was the same yesterday, today, and forever. The works that you did, we do also, and you're a high priest tonight that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. How much more do we need? How much do those Jews need to see that he was a prophet, a virgin, conceived, and all these things, but they, their creeds blind them. Lord, there's some here come like, maybe not from Sheba, but they come from many places. I pray, God, that you'll identify yourself tonight real, and then identify yourself in them as the instinct of that mother and that little deer did that day. We are yours, Father. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to have faith and believe, each one of you, all around, everywhere. And just pray. I don't just look and pray now and just believe. See, this might not, the Holy Spirit might not be pleased with doing this. If he doesn't, I'll call up a prayer line. But just stand here. Somebody out there, even if you, I don't want you with prayer cards. Just, just, anybody just, just pray. Of course, I wouldn't know, but you just pray and see. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know that man don't know me. He knows nothing about me. But I know that I do believe your faith is unconscious. Don't press when I jump. You jump away from it. It's right with you. Just relax yourself and leave. Just believe and I have faith. My Lord Jesus Christ, speak unto my people. I say unto thee, repent, Jesus, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then ye come forward and confess thy sins. Then ye are the Lord Jesus Christ. Now forgive thee of all thy iniquities. Then ye are chosen a more perfect way. For yea, ye shall be held accountable for every unspoken word and every idle word on the great and noble day of the judgment. Yea, I say unto thee, my children, make the crooked path straighter, and ye are the Lord thy God. Shall confirm my word which I am following by the Lord Jesus Christ has spoken. Amen. Be a reverend. Just have faith. Just believe. Sometimes your faith is unconscious. You have it, you don't know it. That little woman had it. She didn't know it.
How many of you have ever seen a picture of that angel of the Lord in the light? It's taken right here in Texas. It's been taken all over the world now. What do you think, sir? You believe? Sit right here for me. <clears throat> Looks like we're looking so eagerly. You have many things wrong with you. You have complications. Many things. Now, when I said that, a real strange feeling comes to you, doesn't it? That's right. Raise up your hand. I'm a total stranger to you. I don't know you. That's right. You know what? That light is settled right down over you. See? That's what you felt. Kind of a real sweet feeling. I was watching it. See? Come right now. Now, yes, you're here. You want to be prayed for before you leave the building. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is and you sitting there and me here, if you believe it, to be God, it's a hernia, one of your great things. That's right. Is that right? If God will tell me who you are, what your name is, you got a good contact with him now, would you believe me to be his prophet, or his servant, excuse me, that's the that lost the law. You believe it? Your name's Mr. Sturgeon. That's right, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be healed. Praise the Lord. Here's a little lady sitting right back there, dark-headed. Yeah, I hear Yes, you. You was amazed when that was said. Now, right at this time, you begin to feel kind of strange, see? Real sweet, like something around you. If anyone will look, if you could see it, kind of an amber-looking light coming down upon the little lady. Now, what her trouble is, she has headaches that bothers her real bad. That is right. If that's right, raise up your hand. And I've never seen her in my life. That's true. That's right. Headaches bothers her. Like a migraine. But they're going to leave you. Now the, there's a man sitting right next to you there. And he's looking right at me so earnestly. And that light is moving right over towards you. And the man is suffering trouble with his eyes. But if you'll believe, God will heal the eyes and make them well. You believe? All right. I never seen you in my life. You're a stranger to me. Say, that young fellow sitting right next to you there also, he suffers with trouble with his head. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I never seen the man in my life. God knows. All right? You believe. The man sitting right next to you, the glasses on, looking this away. Yes. You're wearing glasses, but that really isn't your trouble. You've got something wrong with your back that you're wanting to be prayed for. That's right. Wave your hand. All right? Mm-hmm. That young fellow sitting right next to you there, right next to you, he's had a lot of troubles. That young man has yesterday with a red crown. You've had a lot of troubles in your family and things. Honey, your wife's a nervous type of a person, and you're suffering with some kind of a pressure in your head also. That's thus saith the law. That is true. You just believe. Don't you doubt, but you believe. Here's a woman sitting right back there. Step right, move back there, settle down right here. She's suffering with an eye trouble in her bladder. Oh, she's going to miss it. Lord, God, help me. Her name is Miss Chambers. Believe with all your heart, Mrs. Chambers. Raise up to your feet. Raise up so that people see who you are. I'm a stranger. I've never seen her in my life. Yeah. It's over now. Jesus Christ makes you well. Hallelujah. Now, if that is that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, where is he? Did he promise to do it? All of these that raise up your hand. All right. Do you want to be a real Christian, you that raised your hand a while ago, like that old mother dear was? While the Holy Spirit's here and the anointing is all over us, why don't you just make your way to come stand right here to all of this a minute? If you're seeking God for salvation, will you come here and just come here at this altar, stand here with me just a minute? Raise up that fist. That's right. God bless you. Anybody in the building, anywhere you're at. Will you come? That's right. Come right now. You that wants to find Christ, you'll never be no closer to him until you meet him. He's here, he's identified. Something real. You join church, a lot of you church members now. You join church, but that's all you have. 
you want to see something real. If that isn't exactly what Jesus Christ identified himself to be, look at this little child coming here crying, the tears running down his little face. No wonder they're tender. They haven't been pulled through everything. Another one coming down the aisle, another one in the back coming down. Little children. Well, the adults has passed theirs by. Won't you come? Come out of here now, stand around the altar. You church members, you people that wants to have an experience of Christ in your heart. Won't you come here? If he knows your heart, you know you couldn't hide it. Won't you come right now and stand here? Just before we go further, come here and stand here for a word of prayer. Will you do it? Come. So stand for him. You stand for him. If you're ashamed of him now, he'll be ashamed of you there. Remember, he is here. The scripture said this would happen. Here he is identifying himself as being here. If you're a church member and don't know Christ as a real experience, won't you come at this time? Now, I'm not much to persuade people. The only thing I can say is tell you the truth. And if Christ's presence plus his word being made manifest, up in the balcony, you didn't raise your hand. Sister, brother, if you want to come down, we're going to wait right here. Come out on down and gather around the altar. Just for a word of prayer. Let the world know. Let Jesus know that you're, that you're not ashamed. You want to be a real Christian. Won't you come? While we're just waiting a moment or two. Church member, lukewarm, backslider, won't you come stand along with them now? Come here and stand along. You who haven't, if you haven't got an experience with God, that you're born into the kingdom of God like that, what more do you want to see? Remember, I tell you in the name of the Lord, if you regard me to be his servant, this is the last sign that the church will see according to the scripture. That's the last thing that Abraham seen done before the promised son arrived. And we are the royal seed of Abraham, and Jesus promised the royal seed to see the same thing that Abraham seen just before the Gentile world burned. Don't put off for something else. Satan trying to get you to look over. Come now, while there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. There may I go vile as he wash all my sins away. Won't you come and accept it now? Hallelujah. I'm waiting just a moment. Somebody else might come and stand here for prayer. Now, I'm going to ask ministers here, brethren, come down and stand with me around while we pray. The ministers out there who's concerned, some of these people in your neighborhood that would come to your church or or something that you're interested in, in souls coming to Christ. You believe this to be Jesus Christ. Now remember, I am not Jesus Christ. I'm your brother, a sinner saved by grace. I'm like you are. But it's Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit that's here with us, keeping his word. He don't have to do this, he, but he promised he would do it. Jesus didn't have to heal the sick. But the Bible said he did it that it might be fulfilled, which was promised of him. Now, we don't care what brand of church that you belong to. If you believe that Jesus Christ is present, you believe that there is a born-again experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ministers, move right up in among these people here. Come right up among them. Lay your hands on them. We're going to offer prayer for them. I'm asking our congregation to be just as reverent as you can for a few moments. How do we know what the Holy Spirit will do? That's it. Move right in. Mangle yourself right with the people. Come right around them, each one. Now remember, there's only one thing you can do is accept what He has promised you. Have you seen the reality of the resurrection of Christ? Now I'm going to ask the congregation if they'll stand just a minute in reverence and respect them. Each one of you believe now. Confess all that you've done. That's all you can do, and then ask God to forgive you and accept it, believe it. Now let everyone pray in your own way. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you with penitent souls. How the little story about that mother dear struck down deep that people wanted to do something or see something real, like the king of the south. We came from the most parts of the earth, the air the way from the south. And a greater than Solomon is here, the Savior of mankind, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Save them, Father. Forgive their sins. Wash their souls in the blood of the Lamb. And give them an experience 
of being born a Christian. No other animal, no nothing else could have done that but the mother dear. That's what she wants. Give us that experience, Lord, now of a born again experience in the kingdom of God while the Holy Spirit is there. Grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. Now, close your eyes, raise up your hands and say, make your confession, say, Jesus, I now believe, take me as I am. There's no more I can do. Heal my sick body. Take me, Lord. I believe you're here. The Holy Spirit is here identifying itself. Save me by thy grace, Lord. God, I know how to do Jesus, down here. Now, I'm going to ask you one favor. Will you give me your undivided, give God your undivided attention for the next 15, 16 minutes? Will you do that? And will you do this? Open up your heart. I remember what I said. Don't let it go over your back like water falling on the dust back of the old thing. Don't do that. Consider this. If I tell you anything is not in the Scripture and a promise for the hour, you're duty-bound. See the manager here and come tell me about it. That's right. I'll, I'll teach you nothing but what's in the Word. And if I stay right with that Word, and if I say it that way, and God it is in the Bible, if the angel of the Lord told me something was in the Bible, it would be the angel of the Lord. Right. He's never one time told me anything but what was in that Word, and you bear me record. He's never said one thing out of the hundreds of thousands and thousands and the languages of the world has he ever one time said anything wrong or said anything that didn't come to pass. Listen, that's the manager man here. This what you all see here is the amateur side of that. Is that right, brother? Well, out there, in, out in the private life where he says, go down to this place and see this and this will come to pass and say this over here, down there. It's just constantly all the time. See, year in and out. The people in the audience just sees the, the little things. But now, if you'll be reverent, now is everybody in this prayer line standing here, strangers to me, raise up your hands to you. Right? How many out there is, knows that I don't know nothing about you? Raise up your hand. Now, a lot of people, thank you. I don't care where you are. If you're up in the balcony, back against the wall, they don't be here where you are. I'm going to, uh, this is for your good. This is for your benefit. See, this is for your benefit. I thought that's my little grandson talking to me, but I got a little grandson in here somewhere and I just thought that's how, and I thought of little Paul. He always said he's going to come stand on the platform and preach for me, and this not quite two years old. I think that little boy finds his mom. So, uh, remember, I'm trying to help you. Uh, God knows that. I'm trying to help you. Now, look, I want you to get the benefit if he does come among us. Now think of it. The person of Jesus Christ working in flesh like he promised he would do in the land. How many of he promised that? Just as it was down there at Sodom when that angel with his back turned. And the, that was God. You believe that was God? How many believe that was God? Sure it was. The Bible said it was. And he, Jesus referred to it. Now notice. Now you out there without a prayer card, I want you to do something for me. Wherever you are. Now remember, these things, watch when it tells you you're healed or what it tells you to do. Watch what it says. If it just tells you, that's to build your faith. And then when your faith comes to the spot, you just reach out and accept God. It isn't me, because the Heavenly Father knows all of me on this line here. I don't see one person that I know. I can see about two or three people in the whole audience that I know. Now, I don't know as right now, I can say, show one. I know that Edwin Wade was here a few minutes ago. I thought I'd see him, and I, I missed him. If I'm not mistaken, I do see somebody I know. There's a man and his wife and a little girl named Fritzinger from up in Ohio. Is that how you got this Fritzinger? You're sitting down in the little loop where you're at. That's brother sister Fritzinger from Ohio, a friend of mine. And outside of that, Sitting back there is a, I see on the side over here, there's an old man going on 92 years old by the name of William Dow. He and his wife, she's a nurse. William Dow in Ohio, a very personal friend of mine, not long ago, he had 91 years old, had a complete heart failure, heart attack, 
and his wife called me to come at once to the dying right there, and all. He's been such a bosom friend to me. On my road up to see him, I was worried. I stopped, and one of my wheels got out of line. It was just cut the tire pieces. And I went in the Texaco station, got some gas, and came out and looked at it. And I looked up, and I see Brother Dow walking down through my church, shaking my hand. I said, praise the Lord. And I looked back this way, and here he come down the street and shook my hand. I went to him. I see his doctor, a young Jew or a middle-aged man, a Jewish man. And I said, what about his doctor? said, he hasn't even got a fight to chance. said, he's another oxygen tent. said, he'll die right there. He said, remember, he's 91 years old. I said, yes, sir. He said, he's complete heart failure. Nothing to be done. He said, it's time to go. And I said, yes, sir. But uh, he ain't going. <laughs> That's all. I went in and put my hand under the tent. I said, Brother Dow, can you hear me? He looked up at me. Now, really, in his name, he's a German, D A U G H, and I pronounce it Dow. And I, and I put my hand on his tent. I said, Do you hear me, Brother Dow? I said, yeah. I said, You're not going. I done seen you're not going. A week from man, standing in my church, who come walking up to this church for Brother Dow. I left the meeting and went over the river to a cafeteria to eat, and when I got out of my car and walked up the street, here comes Brother Dow with his hand on. Then vision doesn't fail. And that man of 91 years old and follows every meeting is in California. Would you just raise up your hand, Brother Dow, sitting there at the people to see what a real soldier is not just sitting right here. Like 91 years old and follows every meeting. When I'm at the tabernacle, he drives hundreds of miles every day to hear me preach a little sermon and go back. God. Amen. It shall be light in the evening time. I said the other day, I was talking to him, I said, what can I do for you, Brother Dow? Just one request, Brother Brown. When he comes, I want to go with him. <laughs> Don't worry. That's secure. Sure. Now, a man come in, was baptized, all come in, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and everything. This is a wonderful sermon tonight. Now I'm going to ask everybody real reverent. You look this way and pray. Now, how many teachers you know that he is a high priest right now that can be touched for the feeling of our group? Well, if he's the same yesterday today and forever, and the same high priest, he would act the same way. Or he's his body is at the, on the throne of God. How many knows that? The body of Jesus is on the throne of God. But he uses our body to manifest himself through just like he promised to do. Worse than I do, should you all. I'm going to ask you to sit still, be reverent, watch, pray. My Heavenly Father, I've tried to be just as reverent as I know how to do about it. Now, just a word from you now, Lord. And then may the still little voice come down through this audience and say, It is I, be not afraid. Grandfather, I commit myself to you with the message that's been preached tonight, with thy word to be confirmed. You don't have to do it, but you will do it, or you do do it, because that you promised to. I pray you shall grant this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody, it's real right. It's real right. How do you do? Now, I'll give you scripture as we go along. If the Lord does, I don't know. But then I've been preaching like that. See, that's one kind of anointing. This is another kind of anointing. That or just blessing. This just one thing just takes a life life from you. Now the lady stands here. I've never seen her in my life. Are we strangers? I believe you said a while ago. I didn't know you. God knows you. He knows me. You know that what we're standing here now, we're going to have to answer for it at the day of judgment. You're aware of that? You know that what we do now, God's going to make us answer for it up there. I just said that for a purpose. Now, if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what you're doing, what's on your mind, or something like that, would you believe it? You'd have to believe that, wouldn't you? Would you believe it out there, you audience? Amen. Now, we stand just exactly like the woman at the well in our Lord. A man and a woman meeting for their first time. Here we are, meeting for, as St. John, 
the fourth chapter. Now, if the Holy Spirit will say, if you're here for somebody else, if you're sick, if it's domestic trouble, if it's financial trouble, whatever it is, I have no idea. But he does. But he can discern the thoughts that's in your heart. He's the word. I can't. I'm a man. You're just a bit nervous, and that's the reason I'm doing this, you see. <clears throat> that's one of your troubles. It's nervousness. That's right. And you also have diabetes. That's another thing that's wrong with you. Um, complications, just many things are wrong. Is that right? That's right. Raise up your hand. You believe he'll heal you? You do. Now your nervousness is caused from your age. But now, that'll all leave you. And I believe that by faith we'll go to Calvary, have a blood transfusion. Now, that's just exactly what he did. He told the woman at the well what her trouble was. Hers was too many husbands. Yours was what I think is nervousness and two or three more things wrong with you. That's right, isn't it? That's the same thing. Now, when he comes to Simon, he told him who he was. You believe God can tell me what your name is? Would it make you believe more? It would. Miss Strong. Yeah. Now, would you believe? Yeah. Go and believe in you. It's all over. Amen. Amen. Come. You believe? I'm also a stranger to you. I don't know you. God does know you. You believe that he can reveal to me what your trouble is? And if he does, then the Lord God be blessed. Is that true? I don't have no. That's the weird. That's, that's him if you feel that. All right? You are suffering also from a nervous condition, mental nervous, to get tore up easy. And you're suffering with a bladder trouble, something wrong with the liver, and you're anemia. That is right. You got something, it keeps being a man up here in here. Do you believe that God can heal you? Keep your husband too? Make him well? You think the stomach trouble will leave and he'll be all right? That's what he's suffering with. Go put your hands on him. Tell him so. I am a stranger to you. The Lord Jesus knows both of us, doesn't he? You believe that God can make you well? If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me uh, the thing that, that you're in your heart, that you believe that he will uh, make you well? You've had some trouble. You've got a, a, a gallbladder trouble for one thing, and another thing that's caused your bladder to have an ulcerated condition. That's what your doctor said. Now, another thing is that they want to operate for that. That's exactly right. Isn't that true? Now, do you believe he can bypass that? You think your faith in him? Now, you know that isn't me doing that. You believe? Go as you have believed. We are strangers to each other, I suppose. The Lord God knows both of us. Do you believe He's able to reveal to me the things that would help you? You, you believe He will. I'm saying positive. That's very good. That's very fine. Now, you have many things wrong with you. So many complications. You, and things in a cough like and you can't get over it and you're real nervous and, and that that's right. And then you've got a burden on your heart. And that burden is for somebody which is your son. And uh, he's having a, a trouble, some domestic troubles. Him and his wife are always fussing and going on the ground and you're a burden for it. That is right. Now you believe with all your heart, the Lord you believe on you believe now. The Lord bless you. How do you do, sir? I am a stranger to you. And I, you're a stranger to me. It's begin the visions now, I see. Looks like the whole house is just getting light, like kind of a whirl, like going around. But you believe that the Lord Jesus could reveal to me 
what you're sending that for? Do you believe it? He would. I would believe that also. And this speaking to you to contact your spirit exactly is what I'm doing it for. See, I don't know yet. So it's got to be something besides me do it. I've got to get myself just so completely away from myself that he does it himself. You understand? Now, one thing, you're suffering with a tremendous nervous condition. And this nervous condition has been for some time. That's right. And that nervous condition has caused you uh, having a high blood pressure also. And you've had a stroke. That's it. Say you've either been a preacher or you are a preacher. Now you are a preacher. I see you standing in the pulpit. Then have faith in God. And that nervousness will leave you. All ministers have that. You'll get all right. Go back to your pulpit and obey God and stay true to that word. You believe your back trouble lets you sit in this chair? You believe it? Oh, okay, so let me keep moving on. Okay, thank you. Come. How do you do? You believe me to be his servant. All right, do you believe that lady's trouble, female trouble, is going to leave you? Amen. You do? Then go ahead. Amen. Kitty trouble, back trouble in your back. You believe that God will heal you and will make you well from that? Thank you, Lord. you believe that he'll make you well? Right. Take on your own. Come, lady. I'm a stranger to you. If I didn't say nothing to you at all, would you believe that the presence of God is here to heal us? You would. Well, if you do, your stomach trouble. I done told you to see. It's just gone. Thank God. Oh, thank you. How do you do this? God lives in the heart, and your heart's been showing up here lately. Bad. You believe He'll make it right? Go on your Lord and believe it. God bless you. You're you me. You're nervous. Of course, you have a stomach trouble, a peptic ulcer, bothers you after eating. You believe it's all gone now? Go get yourself something to eat. Hey. I mean, hard for you to get up. The back's been bothering you so bad. It won't bother you no more if you'll believe it, will you? All right, go on. May the Lord Jesus make you think. Hey. What you so nervous about? <laughs> Just go on and say, I ain't going to be nervous no more, and you won't be. All right, sir. Come, lady. <laughs> now, uh, Ethiopian woman, white man, just exactly like something like it met in that day. Jesus, they had a segregation like they used to have in the South, but they don't have it anymore. Jesus said, No, that all people was God people. There was no difference. See? Or should you are Samaritan? Now, if God doesn't help you, pretty soon that arthritis will cripple you up. But do you believe he's going to help you make you well? This is the woman. Then go on your own and tell your people what great things God has done. Now there is a surgeon ready to scoot out a knife. Just a moment. It wasn't this woman. Now just a moment. Everybody reverent now. Is Satan trying to do something? She's got tumor, and that devil's screaming for help. Come on, look. But the Holy Spirit's screaming, too. Who are you going to believe? Yeah. All right. Get up out of that cock, lady. Read the Bible of Scripture. You believe? All things are possible. Do you believe? How about you, the honor? Let us stand on our feet right now. Right now is the time to do it. Let every person, let every person stand on your feet right now. Give God praise. Raise up your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you for your greatness and your healing for you. Just before we start the prayer line, might be somebody here who's never been here before. I don't know who you are, but God knows you. If I told the truth, let God identify it for it's the truth or not. That's the proof of it. If he's raised from the dead, he's the same yesterday and forever. He said in John 14, 12, 
he that believeth, not he that maketh believe, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. Is that right? Someone said, greater shall you. That's right. Said, well, we preach the gospel, that's greater. Just do the things he done. That'll prove it to me. See? Then we talk about the greater. I can show you the greater things he's doing now than he did when he was on earth. And that's not just preaching the gospel either. That's in signs and miracles. Not time for it. Just believe and may the God of heaven who raised up Jesus Christ from the dead and has presented him here alive to us after 2,000 years, identify this message that is correct. The tokens got to be applied. Now, you've got diseases and troubles. Pray. Just sincerely say, Lord, I believe that you're a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, and we're told by this minister here that you are with us, present, and I want you to be present with us and identify yourself. I pray, every one of you. Now, it's up to God to say something. What a time. Oh, I wish you could just know something. How you feel when that comes. The whole world belongs to you. Amen. No devil go to demon. He's a defeated being. My Lord is present. It's all in our hands. Amen. Please be real quiet. Don't walk. Sit still. You in the wheelchairs, they don't think you're helpless. Believe you. You, you went through prayer lines and been failed and failed. It wasn't a minister prayed for you. Failed it's your faith, and you begin to think you ain't going to do nothing. You believe? Here, here's this light. Over here, over a little colored lady sitting back here. Stand with her hands up like this. Yeah, he was praying. You believe me to be his prophet or his servant? I mustn't say that because it stumbles people so much. You have a fun. Here's a white man, colored woman, just like it was our Lord and the woman at the well. Two different races. He let them know there's no difference in races. Our colors have nothing to do with it. We're all. We could give each other a blood transfusion. No, God made of one blood all nations. They're having headaches, tremendous headaches. Then you've got a burden on your heart. That's for that child. And you, it's oppressed. It's exactly, is that true? That's right. This lady sitting over from you there, she seems to be identified with you, which is your mother. That's right. And she's got something wrong with her. Do you believe me, lady? You do? Your trouble is a hurting in your side. That's right. It's your right side that hurts. Is that right? Raise up your hand if that's right. It ain't going to bother you no more. You believe if God can tell me who you are? It's low. Correct. All right. Go on your way. Lord Jesus gives you your request. Right out at the end of there is another little colored lady sitting looking at this, this black that tore her to pieces. She's looking at it and she believes it. I saw she see that thing right there by her. She's suffering with kidney trouble. That's right. It's all over now. He's healed. She's healed. Hallelujah. Why don't you believe? Yeah. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe that? Here's, look at the colored people. Where's your faith at, white folks? There's a colored lady sitting right here looking at it. You kind of a large lady. She's got trouble with her knee. Mm-hmm. She's also got uh, trouble. She got heart trouble. It's a weakness, flutters, and things like that. Especially when you're trying to lay down, smother. <laughs> that happened last night. Remember, now, I'm not reading your mind, but I know what you prayed about. You want to be called to this today, and He's answered for you. Now you also can't hardly get up because you got arthritis. That is right. And then another thing, you got a stomach trouble, which is a growth inside the stomach. That is true. Now, do you believe me to be his prophet? I'll say it anyhow. Believe in me, you'll be made well. What about your stomach trouble? Do you believe that God has healed your stomach trouble sitting there, too? You believe it? All right, then you can have your healing of your stomach. Amen. 
Don't quit smoking there, lady. Don't believe, believe God will make you quit smoking. Hmm? Been trying for a long time. You got stomach trouble also. Been trying to quit cigarettes. That's what's making your stomach trouble. Will you give them up? I resent them from you in the name of Jesus Christ because of your faith to touch you. I challenge you to believe God. There's a little woman sitting there praying for her, a loved one, in a hospital dying with cancer. Right. It's an uncle. That's right. You're either a, you're a minister's wife. You believe with all your heart, the man will get well. I challenge you to believe God. What is that? It's the identification of Jesus Christ. You say, what is that? He's the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwell among us. The Word is sharper than the two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can't you see the Word has come among us in the last days? It's the Holy Spirit taking the Word of God and identifying Jesus Christ, which is the token. Amen. Do you believe? How many of you got prayer cards? Let all on this side got prayer cards stand up in this line over here. Just stand, all on that side, just that side. Stand out here in the aisle. No, just on the right hand aisle, please. Right there. Watch your stick to your place. Then when they get through, let the others all stand up after they come through, then vice versa at the other side. I let everybody be ready. The Holy Spirit took over the meeting, so there's nothing said and done to prove. How many believes he's here? How many believes that's the token? How many believes it's the word? Look, how many knows that the book of Hebrews says that the word of God discerns the thoughts that's in the heart? How many knows that? How many knows that that's the reason Jesus could discern the thoughts in their heart because he was the word? How many believe that? How many believe that that's what was with prophets? They were who the word come to. Now, if the word returns to us, won't it do the same? Then how can the word that identifies the word be wrong by the word? Reverend. Hey, this lady sitting here. She's got something on her heart, too. I just happened to turn around and kiss it. She misses Grant. I never knew that. But you are Mrs. Grant because I see you with me. You got the, a nervousness that's bothering you. You got your son's got something other his blood like dripping. I challenge you to believe it. Amen. He is the master of the situation. He's the master of death. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, by your presence is anointing us here in this building, and we are aware this is the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that you'll heal every person that wears these handkerchiefs. One time we we're taught in the Bible that your people right in the line of duty was crossing the Red Sea, and the sea got in their way on their road to the Promised Land. God looked down through that pillar of fire with angry eyes, and the sea got scared, moved back, and Israel went on to the Promised Land. Right in the line of duty. Oh, Lord God, let your eyes look to the blood of Jesus Christ down into this token here that we're holding over these handkerchiefs today. And may everybody that wears this, may the sickness get scared. May it move back and let your people cross to the promise of good health. A prayer of faith shall save the sick. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be so. Amen. How many believing Methodist preachers are here? Baptist preachers, Presbyterian preachers, Baptist preachers, Lutheran or Pentecostals. How many of you believe this to be the truth? Come here and stand by me while we pray for the sick man. Come up here, all you preachers that believe. It's all right. Brother Grant, that's all right. Come down here, brother. Brother Grant's got a ministry of praying for the sick. A gallant man, a good man, a man that God hears and answers prayer for. Brother Grant, I'm happy to put my arm around him today and say that. My brother. Now, He's going to be down here praying with me. When you come through this line, just like he was coming beneath the cross, brother, make a double line right here. Right here. Make a double line. Some up here, some down there. Brother Roy Borders, where are you at? Uh, brother Roy Borders, I thought he was here. Look here at the ministers, would you? Look at there. That makes me feel good, brother. Hallelujah. Ministers of the cross. 
man who's standing up here to identify himself with the message. Yes, amen. What can happen? Now look, don't lay it on to the ministers now. They've come to identify themselves. When you pass through your identify, holds a token before you. Lord Jesus, I've confessed my sins. In return, you have given me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I am a purchased product. Sin, sickness, or nothing can hold me from your own. I'm moving right. Hold that. Oh, before you pass through here, God will heal you to go out of here rejoicing and happy. Be well. Do you believe it? Now, each person in here, let's bow our heads, brother, while together. We don't know what's going to happen. We just don't know. There's not any reason for any sick person to leave the building this afternoon. Hold that token in your heart. Pass right through this prayer line where ministers who's consecrated their lives to, to the service is going to stand here laying hands upon you as you pass through. You say, what'd you do that for, Brother Bram? I want you to ever want to know that it's just that I'm not the healer. This man has just as much right to pray for the sick as anybody else. Frankly, I believe God would answer their prayers for he would mind. I'm tired and wore out and everything else, I believe they, he'd answer their prayers. And here they stand right in the midst of it to identify themselves. Not a shame. Take your place. Hallelujah. I appreciate man like that. Now, brethren, I know your feeling. I'm I'm one with you. I'm the one that's Weave my net with you out here in Texas to try to catch every one of them fish that God's ordained to life out there. I'm doing my very best. I'm with you 100%. Sometimes I scold and holler about organizations and things. That don't mean I'm against you, my brother. I mean I'm against the system that would separate us from being brothers because of some religious doctrine. We are brothers by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We hold the same token. We receive the same blood. So let's believe that. We can meet there, can't we, brother? Every one of us under the blood. I was ordained a Baptist. Maybe you're a Methodist or Lutheran or Presbyterian, Pentecostal, oneness, twoness, threeness, or whatever you have, Church of God. Whatever that don't make any difference. We can't agree upon them little things. Let's forget about it then. Something we can't agree upon is Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for our sins, rose again, and give us a token. We're standing here with our prayers to hold over these sick brothers and sisters that pass through this line. I'm going to believe it with all my heart. I've seen something happen right then. Hey, <laughs> I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm feeling good crazy. I just hope I can stay this way. That's yes, fair. I just feel wonderful this way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm walking off this platform down here to identify myself with these brothers. I'm identifying myself with them as we all are holding our tokens in our hands and in our hearts. As we obey your command to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. May every person passing through here present their token that they have received the Holy Ghost, that they are a born-again child of God, that they believe it with all their heart, and as they pass through, may they curse that disease and affliction of their body, and may they go out of here rejoicing, knowing that their faith has made them whole. Lord God, as we lay in the Old Testament our hands upon the sacrifice to identify ourselves with the sacrifice, we lay our hands upon Jesus and identified ourselves with him. He laid his hands upon us now in the ministry, identifying himself with us for signs and wonders. And we are laying our hands upon the sick to identify ourselves with them, with our faith connected with them. Sickness has to go. May it do it in the name of Jesus Christ as we walk down here to receive it. Let all the congregation pray. Roy, if somebody from here stand with this microphone and keep the line straight. Look, as you pass through here now, Come believing. Come praying. We're just going to lay hands on the sick. Come right through praying. When you pass through the line of this ministry, if you're walking on crutches, lay them down and walk away. If you've had cancer, sickness, say, the doctor's done all he can do. He's done all he could. He said, I have to die. I'm not going to die. Here's my token, Lord. You promised me a three score and ten. I'm going right through your door. See, do that. Will you do it? In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. All right. Only believe. Hang with me. Now, if I have spoke the truth and told you that these things are supposed to be, and here it is in the Bible, that this is the hour. You might have been taught in another school. So was the Pharisee. But the Bible said in that day, a virgin shall conceive. He, she did. He said the characteristics of the Messiah would be thus. It was. But... They didn't believe it. That didn't stop him from going right on just the same. Same as it is now. We're living in the last hours of the last day. Science says it's three minutes till midnight. 
I think it's later than that now. Most any time, communism has wormed the country, and preachers are gone after communism instead of Christ. It just looks like God trying to condemn that. Why not see the hour we're living in? Communism, we ain't got... My, my. And I ain't afraid of communism. It's the coming of the Lord. It's going to catch you unprepared is what it is to the church. Now, let everybody, let all America turn to God and watch what happens to communism. <laughs> You have to find the disease and then get the cure. Now, everybody reverent, please don't move around. Now, how many out there that does not have a prayer card and you want God to heal you, just raise your hand. Say, I, 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 I'm bleeding. No matter where you are, now look, I think this is a lot. <laughs> All right. If you have, can you hear me back here? All right. All right. Now, you watch it, Brother Roy. Now, one word from God will mean more than all I could say. Now, it's looking from here. It's hard. It's, it's always was. See, the lights are right in your face, and it's kind of hard to see out there, to see the people. And I don't know. I can see one person, actually, that I can see now that I know. How many of you strangers to me raise up your hand know that I don't know nothing about you? I guess it's everywhere. How many of the prayer line knows I know nothing about you? Raise your hands. All along the prayer line there. If you can hear me, raise up your hands if, if I'm a stranger. Everyone. Now... What is he? He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. That woman who touched his garment, she might not have had a prayer card either. But she touched him. And when she did, something happened. Now, you touch the same way. Touch him. How many knows that Hebrews, the fourth chapter, says that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? How many know? Well, would he display his same characteristics? If he's the same yesterday and forever, he would. All right? Now, is this the... Brother Perry, you bring him to me. Now, I won't ever want to be real reverent. Right here, just right here, sister. Now, can you hear me? Now, I don't know. You watch everyone who's on the, the engineer there because I don't know how. A vision. Now, remember, I'm not no Messiah. I'm no Christ. But he is here. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. He's here. He's keeping his word. Now, if this woman's sick, I don't know. I don't know her. She's older than I. We probably born years apart and miles apart, and it's our first time we meet. Now, that's just like our Lord met a woman in St. John 4. I'm trying to make it so clear you can't keep from seeing it. Then at the judgment bar, there's no blood on my hands at that day. Now, Jesus promised that in the last days, this would take place again. As we go through the week, you'll find out. It's a promise. I, I do not know the lady. This is a man and a woman meeting for the first time. Now, if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me uh, what you're here for or somebody else or what you're doing or what's wrong with you or what you have done, if it's finances, domestic, whatever it is, it'll have to come from some supernatural power because I don't know you. How many are a witness to that? It has to come through a supernatural power. Now, you can play like the Pharisees. Say it's a, around the other side of the Lord. You can play like the Pharisees and say it's an evil spirit, which many do. That's between you and God, then. Then you have their reward. But if you say it's of God, then you have his reward. Now, that's better. Thank you. Now, just look at me just a minute. Jesus said, as Peter and John passed through a gate called Beulah, said, look on me. I, I do not know you. And now, if the Holy Spirit, somebody besides me, will come and reveal what's in your heart, then the Bible said the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. That's exactly what the Bible says. Now, that reveals then the secret of the heart. Now, that would be the characteristic of God, the Word, made manifest in this day. How many believe that? Now, now you see what it is? Now, I've preached it, told you about it, but is it true? That's the next thing. Now, if it's true, every one of you, if it isn't true, she'll know it. Certainly. She'll know it. You'll know it too. But if it isn't true, then I've, uh, I've witnessed wrong of Christ. If it is true, each one of you should give your hearts to him, should believe him with all your heart, and reach up and accept him for whatever you have need of. Amen. That's true. Now, may the Holy Spirit identify himself in the name of Jesus Christ. I have no idea what you're there for. You just look like a 
nice-looking, motherly-like woman standing there, and that's all I know about you. But the Holy Spirit can reveal what you're here for, what your trouble is, or something. You know what's the truth or not. Now, you're, what it is you want prayer for is something like the muscles in your face. It's neurology like in your face. Now, if that's right, raise up your hand. You believe? Now, now you might say, he just guessed that. Now, she's a fine person. Now, just look here just a minute, sister. I don't know what he told you, but whatever it was, it was true. You, you're a witness of that. That's right. My, you believe that God will heal you for that? Now, you know it's his presence. There's something here that knows you. Something like Jesus said to the woman, he knew where her trouble was. Now he knew where your trouble was. And it seems like it's your burden for somebody else. It's, your, it's a man. It's your husband. He's your also. Right? And, uh, and you believe that God can reveal your husband's trouble to me? He's a real sick man. He has complications. One thing that's bothering him is a uh, heart trouble. He has a heart trouble. That's right, raise up your hand. He also has a hernia. That's right. Is that right? He has real nervous. He has real nervous. That's true, isn't it? If Jesus will reveal to me, he told Peter who he was, if he'll reveal to me who you are, will you believe it's him? You're not from here. You've come from the east of here. You're from Louisiana. That's right. And your name is Mrs. Coleman. Return home. Jesus Christ makes you well. Your faith does your hand. Do you believe with all your heart? Jesus Christ, identifying himself in his resurrection. You see what I mean? Now, anybody that's got a normal mind knows that no human being can do that. Now, you out there, you say to God like this, I, I, I know the man doesn't know me, so I'm going to pray for something. Lord, can I touch your garment? If it is, then you identify yourself in your resurrection Turn, let me touch you, and then you speak through him to me. See what happens. That's right. How do you do, sir? Would you come this way just a little closer? There's people back behind you there. See, everything now, it's your, every, every spirit is just like a throb. You catch it. Also, know their thinking, and you get, you get all mixed up. Do you believe me to be his servant? You believe that Christ could reveal to me what you're here for? And remember, we're going to meet at the judgment bar someday and give an account for this tonight. You aware of that? Your trouble, one of them is in your back. You have many troubles. You have a back trouble. And your eyes are going. You have eye trouble. That's right. Raise up your hand. Now, you also are doing something you want to get away from. Is all right to say it? You want to quit that smoking? And, and another thing, you've had, you feel that that's been the thing that's hindered you from receiving the Holy Ghost. Now, you want to receive the Holy Ghost. That's it's bizarre in your heart. That's right. Wave your hands like this. Well, it's left you now. Go receive the Holy Ghost. And be healed. You believe? Uh, please be real reverent. Uh, we're getting real late. Just set still just a moment. How do you do? We are strangers to each other. The Lord Jesus knows us both. Now, don't be afraid. See, you're kind of, see just relax. It's His presence. See, that's it. It's his presence. Now, you have a real strange feeling, uh, kind of a sweet, humble-like feeling. See? Now, standing in the presence of a man would make you feel that way. How many ever seen that light, that pillar of light, fire? It's taken right here in Texas. First time. Second time. It's hanging right to the woman. See, in this dimension now, I wish you would just, if you just see, when you're stop moving, that's what it does. It. See, tomorrow night we'll have this prayer line at 9 o'clock. Uh, I'm keeping you too long. Let's take this one woman then. Just a minute. 
You believe? Sitting there? Yes. For that weakness you're bothered with? That's what's wrong. See, what does she touch? I don't know the woman. She touched the high priest. Now see, I had my back to her, just as it did in Abraham's time. Here, look this way, sister, just a minute. You seem to have a burden on your heart. It is. It's your daughter back there. She's got trouble with her ears. <laughs> That's right. You believe now with all your heart? All right, just believe now. She'll get well. See what I mean? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Do you believe? There's a little lady who stuck her hand down back there. She's looking right at me. She's suffering with diabetes. Do you believe that God will heal that diabetes? Sit him in there. All right. You have what you ask for, then. Just believe. Lady over there from you's got colon trouble and bladder trouble. Do you believe that God will heal that? Make that well? All right. You can have what you ask for. Little lady there. See, now look, just ask her something real sweet struck her. See, her baby, that's what's doing it. It's not me. It's God. Amen. Here, here's a man sitting right here on the end. He's got bronchial trouble. This elderly man sitting right here looking at me. You believe that God will heal that, sir? That one sitting next to you is suffering with an infection in her body. That's right, sister. Wave your handkerchief if that's right. All right. You all lay hands on one another. Believe with all your hearts, Father and daughter. So why not? Lay <laughs> your hands on one another and believe with all your heart. Jesus, make you well. I, I challenge your faith to believe it. The lady sitting right behind him there is suffering with a stomach trouble. You believe God will make you well, lady? That's your trouble. That's right. Stand up on your feet so the people can see. See? Who are they touching out there? Say I'm not mistaken, there's your mother sitting next to you there. She has an infection in her bowels. You believe that God will heal that lady? Stand up also and be healed. Believe. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He identifies himself. You believe me to be his prophet or a servant? That stumbles the people. Say, well, they don't understand. Look here. You believe with all your heart? You're suffering with an extreme nervousness. You believe... I can tell you what caused it. You had an automobile accident. That's right. That's right. Automobile wreck, and it's hurt your back and one, your shoulder. Is that right? It's going to leave you now. Just the time of life. Oh, so it's bothering it, educating it, but you're going to be all right. Go believe with all your heart. Jesus Christ will make you well. You believe? Amen. You believe? You believe in heal arthritis? Well, just keep on walking, and he'll make you well. How many believes with all your heart? You say, I truly do believe with all my heart. If thou canst believe. You believe he heals diabetes and makes people well with sugar diabetes? And heals them? You believe? Just keep on walking. Say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Believe with all your heart and you shall be healed. How many believes out there now with all your heart? Don't see you're moving around. You're disturbing it, friends. I'll tell you. How many believes just raise up your hand and say, I believe with all my heart. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. Now, if Jesus has kept his word and believed that, and has proved it to you, Jesus also said this, his last commission to his church, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, how many believes? He said, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Do you believe that promise? Then lay your hands on somebody next to you. If he doesn't heal you, you'll die. You're shattered. But Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you believe it? Go ahead and believe now and you'll get well. Come, lady. You believe that God will heal that TV and diabetes make you well? Take all right, go believe with all your heart and be well. Praying, are you praying one for another? Lay your hands on one another. Let's just pray all together. Everybody lay your hands on one another. Sitting lady. Put your hands on one another. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are sure. That God identifies Himself among His people, His characteristics as the same yesterday, today, and forever, manifest themselves. O oh Lord God, You who made the promise of the Word, You said these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. These people have confessed to be believers, the believers in the resurrected Jesus. 
who is identifying himself now by the same characteristic that he was when he was here on the earth, making the Scriptures positive truth that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord Jesus, with these believers, with their hands on each other, in the divine presence of the resurrected, identified Son of God, who is made flesh among us again tonight in the flesh of his believers, I command every unclean spirit, every sickness and disease to depart out of these people as these believers have their hands on one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be so. All that will believe your healing now, that believes that right now in the identified presence of the resurrected Son of God, that you believe that you have your request given to you and will identify the same thing, stand on your feet and say, I accept it with all my heart. Stand up. Everybody in the presence of Jesus Christ that will believe. Praise Him. Give Him praise and glory. Just raise up your hands and give Him thanks. God will confirm every promise that He made. God. Now, if somebody thinks a gift is a, a great big knife, God gave you a gift and you take it and slice it and do what? You've got the wrong conception of a gift. A gift is knowing how to get yourself out of the way and let God do what He wants to do. See? It's knowing how to relax yourself that God can use you in the way that He wants to. Yeah. Get, get yourself out of the way. See? I don't know none of these people. Don't know this person here. Here's a lady sitting here. Looks about like a precious one that just passed on the glory of Jesus. Wouldn't I be a horrible thing if my mother could look from glory and I think I'd come here to deceive a poor person like that? What objective would I have? I'd be you thinking. I'm here to try to help you. And the only thing I can do is just do what I'm commissioned to do. I can't make people believe. I can't make no one believe. Or I have, I'm not a theologian. I'm not even a I'm not, I'm going to call myself a preacher, see, because I have no education. A preacher today is somebody who's got a Bachelor of Art and Doctor's degree. Well, I don't know what them things are. Somebody asked me the other day, said, you don't use your nouns and pronouns, right? I said, I don't know what they are. I, I don't know, I didn't know what a noun was or a pronoun. I couldn't tell you to say what the difference between a noun and pronoun. I can't tell you. But one thing I know, I know him. And the power of his resurrection is all I care about. Him is the one I want to know. To know him is life, and that's what I'm after. Life to live. That's what you're here for. Life to live. Now, ladies, if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me something that you have done, something that you ought not have done, something that you're here for, like he did the woman, told her what was wrong with her. Maybe tell what's wrong with you if there is. Then you'll know what is the truth or not. You'll be witness to that. Would that make you you know there's something something had to come from somewhere. It could be natural. It had to be supernatural. Oh. Would it cause you to believe that this word that has said to be God interpreted his own word then that he got vindicated? Will he always believe the same? Be a rest. I remember. Be real rest. You say you're stalling, Brother Brown? Yes, certainly. I don't know the woman. It's got to take something else. The angel of the Lord, the Holy Spirit itself, that pillar of fire that led the children to Israel through the wilderness. See, when he was there, he was Jesus. Moses was seen, seen the approach of Christ's greater riches and that of Egypt. He forsook him. When Jesus here on earth, he said, I come to God and go to God. He died, buried, rose, and sent it up. And Saul, on his road down to uh, Damascus, was struck down by that same life. And that Jew would have never called some freak life. Lord, and he said, Lord, who are you? He knew that was the Lord that led his people to the wilderness. He said, I'm Jesus. The same yesterday, day, and forever. Now, that same life is among us. Then it vindicates itself by producing what it did there. Now, if he will do that, that will make us believe and be happy in him. May he grant You are just Get you to say something, see, when you, when you get yourself away, it lifts way up and just any words you say, anything, see, you're a human being, you got a spirit. And whatever that spirit is, seems to I can see, I can see just what it is and which way you're going there, but that's a gift of God. That's what he just said to the woman. Same thing. Exactly the same thing. Now, you are here 
because you're in the hand of somebody else. You're wanting prayer for somebody else, and that somebody else is in the hospital. And it's tuberculosis. That's your husband. That's right. And another thing I see, he's shattered to death. He's a dark spirit over him because he isn't a Christian. That's right, isn't that true? He isn't a Christian. He's shattered to death. And you're interested that he does receive Christ. Now see, you've had some trouble too, or they're expecting you to have TV or something. Maybe you had an X-ray or something. It, it just X-rays your heart TV. That's right, isn't it? Now, will you go to believe with all your heart? Now, just as you have believed, whatever you believe this was now, that knows it, just as you believe it, go to him. Tell him what's happened here. Maybe that dark spirit will leave. You'll be saved. Then you'll get up and come home. Now, believe with all your heart. You believe? That's, you can judge it whatever you wish. It's up to you. How do you do that? I suppose we're strangers to one another. But uh, you believe that God could reveal to me uh, your troubles? And if he would, it would cause you to believe greatly, would it? That man from up in here, too. He believes that too. Uh, <coughs> No, you are here standing for somebody else too. It's your husband. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus can reveal to me what is wrong with your husband? Do you believe that he hasn't hurt yet? That's right. And there is a child here that has an affliction that you're praying for too. Do you believe that that will happen to you? All right. Do you believe with all your heart now, just as you have believed. So be it. See, I can't heal. I can only pronounce see, what I see. And you believe with all your heart, you'll be the way you have believed. You believe it, and the Lord bless you. God bless you. Yes, don't doubt it. Have faith. It's real ready. Now, if, if you start, don't start moving around. See, you're setting real nice. Stay like that and listen for a few minutes. How do you do this? I don't know you. We're strangers, he says. But we've got to meet at the judgment bar. Of Christ and answer for our our hearing here tonight. You believe that, do you? Sir? I I just watch a lot, sir. It's anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now you're suffering with your stomach. Your stomach's bothering you. That's right. And you've got something you're trying to get rid of. A habit. That's really what's causing your stomach. You'll go to cancer pretty soon if you don't stop smoking. You believe that God will take it away from you and make, and make you well? You will? You believe if I lay hands up on you out while this is something that you know seems mysterious to you, but that anointing of Christ, if I'm asking to take that thing away from you and make you well, you can lay her down and walk away. You believe that? Come here. Come here. Satan, upon the basis of our faith, the presence of Jesus Christ who triumphs over you and all your time, I charge this devil that's sending this man to a premature grave with them cigarettes, come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, go now. It's the over. Live like you should. Do you believe? He believes. How you do? My friendly looking lady, you believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. You believe me to be his servant. The reason I say that, when you do read my book, it's in there, if you can get the people to believe you. See, that's the main thing. You've got to believe it. You just know the way to approach God that is through a gift, but to believe it. And Martha said, I, I believe that you're the Son of God. If you've been here, my brother would not have died. See, she approached it right when she had a right to fuss at him about my son, but she didn't do it. She'd come with reverence. She got what she asked for. How do you believe that, that God 
omnipresent, he knows all things. Do you believe that he's able to reveal to you the things that's wrong with you? The trouble is in the stomach. He has complications, many things wrong. And there are like complications that the growth that's in the stomach. I can't quite that. That's right. All right? But sweetly, you go on back down. Believe with all your heart. Can you not talk to me? How do you do? Now you got a lady trouble. And that shows that it's in the ovary. And it's a stick in the ovary. You mean he's trying to remove that stick? I'll say what happened in my wife. <coughs> when you heard the testimony? What can you do like her? Okay, maybe that way you can see the for you. Look here, my lady. Yours is the lady in trouble, too. She's the female daughter. Do you believe that you can crack the presence to make you well? Really? And do you believe that it will all be gone, all over with, and you'll get well and live a normal life? Go believe it now. You believe that God can heal, shoot it out here to you, make you well? All right, but you won't walk across the platform, and I believe you, and you'll get open, you can believe that the blood transfusion of Calvary will make it so. There's something happened in the audience that didn't get it, that's right. sitting right here looking at you, suffering with stomach trouble. Do you believe that Jesus Christ makes you well? Right next to you is the lady who's got a heart trouble right back right there, right behind the dark looking hat on. With a heart trouble, you had it. You, you did have it. See, I said you had it. You're both free now. Jesus Christ makes you both right. All right, along the road. That's the At your age, you have complications, many things wrong, but one of the main things you want to pray for is your heart, too. You believe you'll make you well from that heart trouble and heal you? Right, go believe me. Okay, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I'm nervous. This is bothering a long time. Getting a prostate, getting up at night. But one of the main things you have is this diabetes. You believe that God can heal you that make you well? Just keep moving on. And thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart. God can heal any kind of blood disease. Any or anything else. Do you believe that? All right, just go on. It'll make you well. How do you do? I see you trying to get up from the bed real slow. Arthritis is without God. Do you believe he's going to leave you tonight and you're going to be well? Just keep walking across the platform. Saying thank you, Lord Jesus. You believe with all your heart. Do you believe with all your heart? Let him go ahead. He's healed anyhow. But he said, you call that he's down. Come. Do you believe the Lord Jesus can heal some trouble and make you well and send you home to eat? Go ahead and believe it. Jesus Christ will make you well. Some lady, do you believe the back trouble, kid trouble things will leave you as you go across the keep through these and I thank you, Lord Jesus? Why are you all saying? Has, has this done anything to your eyes for the day? Do you believe with all your heart? Just look going there with the people. Now you in the audience. Do you believe? See what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if he's still the Son of God. Now, those people going sitting in, they're all happy, looking to one another, rejoicing, telling one another about what great things the Lord has done. <laughs> Little lady sitting here, suffering with a back trouble, sitting right here, the gray looking hair, no, the lady behind you. You touched something, didn't you? You know, it wasn't me. It was him, the high priest. You believe with all your heart that your back won't bother you no more? Would you like to lay them cigarettes down and say, I'll never pick them up? He proved it to us that the Holy Spirit, that the world cannot kill, that could kill Jesus when he was in flesh, that put him to death. But now he's raised in a glorified condition. He can never be killed no more. And he said, a little while and the world won't see me no more. 
Yet ye, the predestinated, the ones that ordained the eternal life, the church, the bride, ye shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the consummation. The things that I do shall you do also. All these promises he made. Now, I know when he was here on earth, he, God was in him. He was God. He was the fullness of God. He was all the Word of God made manifest. And the Bible is still God, the Word, and is some of the revelation yet to be revealed. And he said in the last days, when the world become like Sodom again, the Son of Man would be revealed, and the sign of Sodom would return. Then the voice would call back the people, those who are ordained to life. We know when he was here, there were millions of people on the earth that never even knew he was here. No reason to know. He come to those who were predestinated to see him. Now you pray. Now be real quiet. Don't move. Wherever you are, balcony, on the lower floors, wherever you are, don't don't move. You sit real still and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, the Bible said in Hebrews 4 that you are right now a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. And we see you on earth. When you were here on earth, a little woman one time touched your garment, and you turned around and said, Who touched you? She hid herself. But yet her faith was identified. Jesus told her that about her blood issue and said her faith had saved you. Now he's that same high priest. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll have to act in the same way if you, if you touch him. And what does that do then? There has to be human flesh on earth to speak his voice. I am the vine, you're the branches. There's no way of getting around it, friends. It's just scripture for truth. You minister through that back there? Now, out there. Just be real reverent and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, let me touch your garment. And you see, the post is one to me, it's 20 feet or more. I don't know a soul out there. I can't even see nobody that I really know tonight sitting here except Pat Tyler sitting here in front of a friend of mine. There's people on cots, stretchers. We've seen this stretcher case open up last night. The man got up and walked away. Why can't you walk tonight? His belief, that's all you have to do. His presence will do it. Here he is. You're going to have to stand by him to raise you up to the last day. Now, you that believe and think as you're praying to you, just look this away now. As Peter and John said, look on up. And they looked earnestly. The man did, expecting to see something. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Now, healing have I none, but such as I have, a gift from God, give I you. If you just believe it, God will work it. I'm going to ask you to believe it. Such as I have, I'll give you. If you believe it, God will work it. Just try it. Here, here it is right now. Amen. I like that. There's a lady sitting right here. She's got a heavy step. Sitting right here on the end. You have a prayer card, lady. Kind of a heavy step. You don't have a, right here. You don't have a prayer card? Yes. You don't have a prayer card? You believe anyhow? You don't need a prayer card if you believe. There's a rebound in the voice. That's because it's hard to call people like this. But try to listen to them as close as you can now. I don't know you. You have no prayer card. Therefore, you'll not be on the platform. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you believe that what will be the same thing just like you revealed to the woman what her trouble was, the woman at the well, Sarah, what she said, and so forth? you believe that? you believe that it would be all right? You're suffering with a blood condition. Something wrong with your blood. If that's right, raise up your hand. But, all right. You don't have it now. It turns right over you. Jesus Christ is on it. Now, I've never seen a woman in my life. Now, what is that? It's got to be spirit. Now, you can say like the Pharisee, that's the devil. Well, you get their reward. You say it's Christ, you get the reward of Christ. I believe that it's the Word being identified in these last days. Not me. Here, here's another little lady sitting right down here. She's suffering with vericoid veins in her legs. She has complications. She has heart trouble. She's praying for a loved one. That's a brother. She's weeping now. She's in contact. That brother is very seriously. It's a diabetic case. 
And also he has another shadow. He's a sinner. And you're praying for him. That's right. Miss Walton, if you believe with all your heart, God will do it for you. You believe it? That's your name. Now, is that any more than what Jesus said to Simon? Yes. Your name is Simon. You're the son of Jonah. Just in faith, don't doubt it. Believe it with all your heart. If you believe it, God will bring it to pass. If you can just here, here's a little lady sitting right over here, looking right at me here. She's kind of got red hair. Her hair's pulled back. Can't you see that light, kind of an amber circle around the woman? She knows it's happening right now. Of course, she feels it. It's so close to her, she can't help from feeling it. If that's right, lady, raise up your hand. That's it. Now, I'm a total stranger to you. I don't know nothing about you. But you were sitting there praying. Hmm? That's right, wave your hand right Now, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which he is, a high priest sitting at the right hand of God, and I'm just standing here by a gift with myself, un, out of, just out of human reason, not thinking on my own, or a way to relax my own mind and thinking and just let God move in, and you believe that he, and me, God knows I don't know you, and you know the same. So if the God will reveal to me your trouble, or something you're waiting for, or wanting, or something more. You believe that God will can do that? You've got trouble with your back. That's one of the things you're praying for. And you got trouble with your eyes. You believe that God will heal them and make them well? You do. You do. You believe God can tell me who you are? This is home. You believe it for your heart now? You can have what you ask for. You believe? Here's an elderly woman sitting a little, little ways behind her there. She's praying also. She has diabetes. I hope she don't miss this. It's right over. She's telling me age. Just a minute. May the Lord help you. Her, as she calls it. All right? I see when she is in contact. She isn't from here. She's from Louisiana. Her her city is a place called Singer, Louisiana. And she's suffering with diabetes. Her name is Mrs. Doyle. That's right, raise up your hand, all right? I'm a total stranger to her, never see her in my life. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, knows all about you. There's a lady sitting back there in the same city, a place called Singer. She's suffering with high blood pressure, and her name is Clark. You believe, Mrs. Clark? All right, you can have what you ask for. You believe? There's the sign. Listen at the voice. Repent. Get back to God as quick as you can. Jesus Christ is here in the power of his resurrection. A wicked and an adulterous generation receives the sign of Jesus Christ living among people. He couldn't do that just with me. It's got to be you, too. See? The woman had to touch his garment. You had to touch his garment. We're just instruments. Do you believe with all your heart? Now, if you believe it, how many believe it? Raise your hands like this. Say, I truly believe it. Now, if you believe it, Jesus said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You believe that? Now, it's great. We haven't time. We're 25 minutes now until uh, 10. Would you just lay your hands over on one another then and just do as I tell you now? Just put your hands on one another. Now, you know upstairs that where you're at. Now, you know as well as anything now, as the Scripture being preached and clearly identified all the way across the building, I see another one right now. See? Another one right here. Stop the trouble. Lady with TV. Mm -hmm. It's just everywhere now, but it weakens you. What, this, what more? You see 50? Sometimes there is that. You want to see 70 the next time. Jesus did that one time at Sychar, and the whole city believed on him. They were watching for the Messiah. The Messiah is here. The Holy Spirit, the Messiah this day. The Messiah that's making the Word be vindicated of his promise. 
Now, I want each one of you, as you lay your hands on each other, if you're a believer. Now, if you don't pray for yourself. You pray for that person, and they're going to be praying for you. Now, the same word that promised this in the last days promised also, and remember, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. The healing coming back is the voice that the sign has been recognized. They lay hands on the sick as a sign. The voice is a hallelujah, the Lord heal me. Now, if these signs accompany a voice, that sign, if you are a believer, it will accompany, the voice will accompany the sign. If I give you this sign that I told you comes from God and God promised it in this day, it's been so thoroughly laid out, there's not nothing but an infidel could keep from believing it. See? Then God turned around and confirmed it to make it so. Now he's here. Now each one in the way you pray at your own church, if it's to yourself, loud, whatever it is, you pray for the person you got your hands on because they're praying for you. And now look up and in the presence of the Messiah, the Christ, the resurrected one still alive after 2,000 years. How can we be so numb in the spirit? That ought to set this nation on fire. That ought to make Beaumont repent and sack off an ashes. But will it do it? No. But you who are looking for him and believe that he would do it and keep his word, it's to you now the promise is given. Put your hands on somebody and pray while I pray for you from here. Lord Jesus, enough has been said, enough has been done. The word that has been promised has been made manifested. The Messiah, the Christ of God, is in divine presence. We feel him, we see him. We know that he promised this in the last days as it was in the days of Sodom. So shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. Then we know we see the, the fire in the skies, the atomic bombs. We see the worm eaten nations, nations of breaking. We see that Israel's in the homeland. Every sign that could be promised has been fulfilled. The next thing is the promised Son coming. Oh, eternal God, in the presence of Jesus Christ, the great Holy Spirit that's here now, confirming that He's here, hear the prayer of these people, hear these Christians. That when I leave, they won't say, Brother Branham did this. Somebody else they didn't know laid hands on them and they were healed. But you promised that the forest had a sign to it. And may they be healed as I commit them to you. In Jesus' name.